<laughs> yo, yo, yo. Put you on the FaceTime back there. <laughs> What's poppin', man? It's Pod Sun Radio. We back in the house for another very special episode. I got a very special guest on here. You know what I mean? I ain't I ain't even gonna say his name. I'm gonna just say he one of the biggest DJs in the fucking world. He ain't, I ain't talking no Arizona in the world. Biggest radio personalities in the world. He got one of the biggest podcasts going. So I ain't even gonna say his name just yet. You know what I mean? Because first I'm gonna give a shout out to my special guest co-host. Y'all know I like to bring some of Arizona people in. You know, give it one of those real quick. But uh, we got Izzy Izzy in the building. What's popping with you? Hey, how's it going? Oh man, it's going good. So uh, she she here to talk her shit real quick. But before we ask these questions, tell the people a little bit about yourself. Who you are? What do you do? I rap. I'm. I'm. Hold on, we can't hear. You got to control the mic better than that. So how do do I hold it? No, just put it right next to your mouth. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. There you go. All just right. like you know. So I'm an up and coming <laughs> artist, <laughs> and this is new to me, you guys. So excuse me. But no, I'm up and coming, and I'm I'm gonna get ready to drop an EP. Spit soon, some but... bars <laughs> right now. <laughs> you guys think I'm fine? Yeah, <laughs> you a rapper, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm dead. And hey, we was at the studio. I don't the other even day. like my shot right now. Like, no, no, you gotta spit something. Hold on, let me. I'm gonna... Don't let him fuck with you, man. No, nah, she got a rap. <laughs> <laughs> she yeah. said I'm a rapper. You gotta bust on. <laughs> Okay, we, we are in the studio. I mean, no, I'm, I'm go acapella, acapella. I'm give, us, crying, give us the hot shit, acapella. <laughs> yeah. okay. You gonna let him cry? Ready? Kev, why you gonna do this? Oh, oh damn! Like, you a rapper? You was about to do I it. Don't lie. Go in. I don't want to take a spotlight. This is you. This is there ain't right. no fucking spotlight to be taken. <laughs> Everyone gets no. the spotlight. No. All right, so y'all didn't already see. Hey, she's a rapper had, who doesn't rap on front. command. You almost had her rapping. She almost was about she to go. Should. She should go. She was ready. No, honestly, just give me a second. At the end, can I do that? All right, definitely. Sure. I like the Thank fact you. you was going to. I seen you take your shit off and all that. So, yeah. <laughs> so we got Izzy Izzy that take the headphones off. Yeah, right. <laughs> we got Izzy Izzy in the building. But uh, so now y'all see the special guest. But yeah, I had to give him that real live introduction. I've been trying to do a podcast with this man since damn 2018. I think I went to one of his charity games, gave him all my money just in hopes to get a podcast. Ain't that some good shit? Halfway shine moment though, because it was a hell of a game. Okay. I will say that. We'll give him a we got Bullet Kevin in the motherfucking house, man. What's going on with you, bro? I'm chilling, man. Yeah, <laughs> yo, that's yeah. crazy, bro. Hey, he came pulling media tricks off top. I'm telling yeah. you. <laughs> you got to rap. Hey, we was literally at the this studio the, the other day so. in Tempe. Somebody walked up over the first thing. You rap? Spit something. <laughs> hey man, you gotta. Hey, that's how it be, though, man. If you're gonna say I'm a rapper, yeah, you gotta be able to go. You know, what? I didn't even, I didn't. Even, I'm know, gonna give y'all something just, though, because I've done everything, damn it. So from like 20 to 22, I did stand up comedy. I still oh, got man. shit on YouTube yeah, to this day. I was nice, don't get me wrong, but I was a little scary. But motherfuckers just always come like, tell me a joke. And I was like. That's not how I don't feel funny right now. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> I'm, I'm relaxing. I'm trying to. But that was my shit, though, for real. So I, I equate that kind of like that. Yeah. But um, all right. So, bro, on some real shit, I really want to talk to you because my thing is about just telling a story. And you have the type of riveting experience that motherfuckers in Arizona just they see what you do, mm. but they don't understand. You know what I'm saying? Even I don't understand. Even somebody like Kel, who's around you, couldn't mm. understand. You know what I'm saying? So I want to kind of just try to peel back the layers. So we're going to start real simple and plain, obviously. So give it to us for you growing up in Phoenix, Arizona, and what part of what side of town are you from and shit like that. So I grew up in Sunny Slope, and then when I was fourteen, I moved to Mesa. Oh, you grew so up. So I went That's to dope. I went I to Westwood know. High, um, and yeah, so I was from Slope to Mesa. Yeah, hey, the slopes kind of rough. Oh yeah, where I lived was real fucked up. My sister lived in the slopes for a minute. I couldn't I couldn't go to the gas station without getting into an almost it's fight fucked with up, a man. Head. Yeah, it's uh, I lived on a. Like 13th Avenue in Vogel. So I lived like right there yeah. in the in the shits, man. So what's your middle school up there? Because I'm unfamiliar. I went to Royal, I went to Royal Palm mm-hmm. in Phoenix for a little bit. And then when I moved to Mesa, I went to uh Keno. Yeah. And then I went to Westwood High and yeah. Got you. All right. So in uh well, I'm gonna ask this first and then I wanna kinda revert back because I'm guessing like I said, I did a lot of my research through, you know, some verifiable sources and shit. I rock. Like that. Yeah. But through, shout out, goddamn. Shout out to motherfucker. Shout out to I rock, who last night gave me a pass to smoke in the studio. <laughs> what? And then he called me like 30 seconds after we got off the phone and he's like, you know what? You got the pass. Just don't use it. Oh, <laughs> I was like, bro. 
sounds like rock. What does that even mean? <laughs> yeah. I said the same thing. I was like, watch, she's going to call you back. Yeah. She's about to call you back. I ain't never got a pass. <laughs> hey, you better not never, not, 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 not never. Because <laughs> in, the, in the studio, don't even think we. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't want you smoking it outside in, in your car. Yo, hey, Jesus Christ. But um, all right. So um, first of all, I want to ask this question because motherfuckers don't realize Mesa is pretty. It's cool. And got nice oh, areas, but Mesa's fucked up too. I grew up on Broadway and Stapley, man. Oh man, Broadway and Stapley ain't nothing nice. So you damn near went from one. So we left. So we left Sunny Slope because my uncle, like, had a hook up on a crib in Mesa, and we thought we were like moving. I mean, it was nicer than Sunny Slope because yeah. where, where I lived in Slope, like across the street from my house, was like a crack house. It was like a little four four unit complex. Yeah. They was running hoes out of one of them. In the street. They was fucking cooking meth in the other one. And then, bro, the shit was crazy. We used to, like, take laser pointers and just sit in my front porch and just fuck with crackheads all night. <laughs> That's just no different than fucking the blade. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So or worse. Then we moved to Mesa thinking it was going to be better. It was better. But, you know, it still was, I guess, it was nicer than where our Sunny Slope was at, you know? Yeah. But Mesa's some, some shit, too. Well, that Shout out, well, there's a lot of Mormons over there, though. Shout out to the Mormons. Yeah. Yeah, it's the Mormons. <laughs> hey, Mormons be dirtbags, too. And I don't mean it like that. I don't oh, know. I'm talking about the religion. <laughs> but I know some wild Mormons that go to that shit before school and after school and then get out of school and start smoking dope just like Nah, that. a lot of the Mormons, they like rebel and they end up doing like heroin and shit. Yes. Yeah. It's a rough life. In high school, like all my, like a lot of Mormon dudes was like shooting up and off the school. Yeah, Man. sniffing hey. somas. I'm about to check on all my Mormon the friends. Somas. Hashtag check on all your Mormon friends because er <laughs> everybody had friends Mormon in friends general. in high school with the bike helmets. Nah, created a hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> check on your Mormon friends. But um, all right, so bro, and uh, really, I asked this question because so my verifiable source, which you done blew up already, the Godfather Rock, he was telling me about like you growing up with a jello which i think jello's mm -hmm. dope as fuck mm -hmm. i think he said geo mm -hmm. and ramses, ramses yeah. and y'all all had this thing when y'all was young where it was like we already wanted to work in well radio. nah that's not true okay uh so rocky was so wrong i was so all of those guys are all older than me mm -hmm. so ramses i think is 40 and i'm 33 Oh, so you couldn't have went to school. <laughs> no, 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 no. But like me and Ramses grew uh I was I went to uh I lived in these apartments by Chris Town when I was like three called Coulter Manor Apartments. Yeah. And it's not a manor by Chris Town. So <laughs> it's you, fucked up. Yeah, you was underprivileged like the rest of us. So <laughs> I when I was like three and Ramses was like eight or some shit. Mm -hmm. I think he's five years older than me. So I think Ramses is thirty eight. But uh I don't know, we was just out running, I mean, I guess I was running around in an apartment complex. Yeah, so you kind of looked up to him at the no, time? No, so we became friends, and like he just kind of like was like my friend who looked out for me because I was a little less. No, no, nah, nah. and then uh, it, we just like I moved, and then that fool would still come over to my house, and we just grew up together. But my he was always like, so, who the hell? so my friend group was always much older than me, yeah, so like. So Ramses went to high school with Gio and D'Angelo. Gotcha. So that was like his crew. And then I was always tagging along because I was like, Ramses is like a little brother. Yeah. So like I would like his, you know, Ramses' grandma's live with me, his sister's live with me. You know what I'm saying? So like Ramses and me go back 30 years. Mm -hmm. Literally 30 That's years. Shy moment, by the way. We used to play Contra and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? But so me and Ramses been like this forever since i could remember mm -hmm. and then uh, i mean he's the best man at my wedding um and then um i met geo and d'angelo because ran just went to, went to school with them yes and then we just kind of you know we're like best friends and it kind of geo was the first person to do radio because mm -hmm. he started interning geo wanted to be a rapper a fire mc by the way yeah. he, he's a rapper he's he, geo could rap his ass off but he really wanted to pursue that. And Power 92 was like a hip hop station. So he started interning there. He was the first one to intern. Yeah. I was still in high school, but I was going to school. Uh, I was already going to school for radio broadcasting when mm -hmm. Gio started interning. So I was going to school at Evit in Mesa for radio yeah, broadcasting. Yeah, I heard this. Yeah. So I think I was probably the first person that was like, I wanted, it was either me or Gio. 
And then Ramses was the second guy to get hired at Power as an intern. Mm-hmm. Then I graduated mm-hmm. high school and I went straight into the internship. Then D'Angelo started interning. And then, you know, we all just kind of went kind of hard on the radio shit. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, obviously Jello's living in Detroit, doing uh, mornings in Detroit. That's and then, big. You know, Geo did nights and been doing his thing in Phoenix. Ramses, the same thing. Um, and then me, like, I just... I would say, like, out of all of us, like, I'm, like, a radio nerd. Yeah. Everybody else just kind of, you know, just did it because it was there. Yeah. I did it because it was, like, all I wanted to do. Grew up in that, watching stars. That's just all I wanted to do. And so, like, and then, like, when I was in high school at Evit, I did an underground hip-hop show called Ready, Set, Ready with my with my other best friend, David, who will be here at some point in time, I'm sure. <laughs> um, we would just play hella underground rap shit and... um. This was like in Mesa, there was like the radio station would only be like a mile, square mile around the school, mm-hmm. but it would, still was on the on the air and shit. So, nah, yeah. but yeah, no, we all grew up together. Me, Ramses, um, Gio, D'Angelo. And like, it just so happened that we all just kind of fell into the radio world. We all were going to do music shit. Gotcha. It just, you know, it, it was a matter of like, where or how yeah we, we wanted to do it. yeah we were all like super hip-hop heads and like you know had the big cd books and like we go buy every album when they first drop and like hip-hop was like life for all of us uh-huh. and it was more like radio just kind of you know made sense for yeah, me because i would talk it. shit i used to just talk shit and like to everybody and yeah. then it was like i could get paid to do this yeah. Yeah. Facts. The big bucks on top of that. <laughs> now, I wasn't no big bucks for a long time, though. Man, hey, it don't matter because that's yeah. it. I'll come back full circle. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I, yeah. That's one thing I know. Even like me and Kel was talking about this earlier. So, you know, when that month, it's going to rain at some day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Might be a drought for a while. That shit going to rain someday. But, um, all right. So, really, you was damn near the little homie, but still like an influence, even to the bigger homies, like at that time. But, um, I got one question. Well, I only said that because you said you and Gio jumped on the radio shit first because I really don't know the background. But um, so that's... Gio was the first guy to work at a radio station. Mm-hmm. I was going to school for it. And and then Gio was interning at Power. Mm-hmm. And then I would have Gio like... Because I was doing my little school radio show and Gio would get me drops from like DJ Fashion and shit. Because he'd, yeah. be like, he'd get me like drops from DJs that were at Power like yeah. for my show. They'd be like, yo, what up is DJ Fashion? You listening to Ready Set yeah. Radio type Arizona shit. Arizona history. And back then, we think in the radio, it is back then the biggest fucking thing it, it known was, to yeah. fucking No, nah, it, it was. It was. It's not no more. Yeah, it's not yeah, nowhere. Thinking Super Snake was, was like a super internet. famous motherfucker. Like, you know what I mean? Right. As a kid, I'm like, oh, you know, Super Snake. Like, no, like, yeah. <laughs> like Snake and the Nuts and yeah, the Nuts. MG's Warning oh, Madhouse. Yeah, and, I remember Midnight Mama C. Oh, yeah, yeah, Melissa. Like, all that shit. Yeah, so for me, like, I grew up listening to that shit. And then Friday Night Flavors with Matt Locks and Squeak Boogie and Little Sean and those guys. And then, you know, I ended up actually doing that show once everyone left to, to 101.5. Like, I, me and Ramses ended up doing Friday Night Flavors for, for a couple of years. That's crazy. Yeah, Melissa the Midnight Mama seat to have me fall in love at eight years old. That. And shout out to Matt Locks, too. Uh, Matt Locks is probably the first person at a radio station that showed me any sort of, like love yeah i shadowed him at for friday night flavors when i was in high school and uh he like let me come up there Mm. and uh and then it was mother's day and i had a clean version of kanye's uh hey mama which was like three or four years before it actually came out oh wow that was an old ass song shine moment you just no 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 that song was out like on the internet forever yeah but But, still but i remember being like hey man um I have that song clean if you guys want it. And then they were like, yeah. And I just hung out in the studio. And, you know, a lot of those guys, Squeak Boogie and Matt Locks are, you know, Matt was at my wedding, like, you know, and I met him when I was a little ass kid. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but shout out to Matt Locks, Friday Night Flavors crew. Nice. You got any questions for Young Kev? I would like to say, uh, what kind of advice do you have for the upcoming new? New what? Uh... I, just any advice that, for uh, upcoming new rappers, I, I guess. Artists? Yeah, artists in general. Mm. I would say people pursuing their dreams, I guess. Well, that's a general statement. 
Um, I don't, yeah. I don't know if someone's dream is to be a electrician. I don't have any advice for that. <laughs> well, since I am an artist, uh, I'm a rapper, I guess. So, well, are you a rapper? Yeah, I do this. I really do. This. Okay, we can find out. We're gonna find out because he really does this. Yeah. This is Markel. He hey, Markel, this. come here. Uh, come here. Yeah, he does this. Yeah. Shout no, out to Markel Del I, I hate it. Anyway, no, my, I, I, I keep it to what you first said, artist. I think that the number one thing I would tell an artist is accountability is very important because I think a lot of times n- now there's no excuse why you you, you shouldn't be Pursue like you could put out music tomorrow. You put it on SoundCloud. You could put it on TuneCore, and it'll be on Spotify in forty eight hours. Like there's no excuse as to why you ain't popping. Yeah. Big like facts. at the end of the day, like there, like like m- there's more artists who grind for seven or eight years, and then you start seeing them, than there mm-hmm. are who like catch one and then they're fucking famous yeah. super fast, right? Super fast. Yeah. But the key is, is those years that nobody's paying attention you got to be consistent Mm -hmm. you know like every every it's a marathon like i know nipsey used to say that right but it's true like the rap shit is a marathon so like if you drop one record and it doesn't do well people will get like super fucking down discouraged and and they start doubting themselves and then they stop putting out shit or they think ah i gotta work on no no like just keep dropping shit like yeah like keep on dropping shit. Like yeah. there's no reason to sit on on a hundred songs on a hard drive. Like you just want to listen to it or write. No, it no, no. And the thing is, is like what happens is somebody will put out something and it won't do as well, well as they had hoped or they envisioned it doing, and then they start second guessing their talent. And mind you, sometimes, most of the time, rather, it doesn't do as well as they hope because it's hot uh-huh. garbage. It's trash, <laughs> right? Most of the time, it's yeah. trash, yeah. right? Yeah. And there are people. You know, who you're like, damn, fam, 20 years you've been doing this, fam. Like, you know, like, I mean, look, my thing is, is have realistic expectations. Shine moment. Okay. So if you're an artist and you've been rapping for like 10 years, right? And shit just ain't going well. Yeah. Figure out a way to turn your rapping into like an extra thousand dollars a month. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But get a job. Yeah, you need a damn job. <laughs> or figure something I mean, else out. Yeah, I think these niggas know they need, or these guys know they need a damn job. Like, but, if they but didn't know that. The, the goal is like, should already have one. drop music consistently, drop pieces of content consistently, feed whatever fan base you have, no matter how small it is, consistently, because it will, it will grow. Even if it's 10, like any progress is forward progress. That's right. So like people are chasing like a hit or viral going viral. And if it happens, fucking right. awesome. Right. But like but you can't judge your temperament on like w- like what someone else's shit is doing. Yeah. Man. A lot of people will see like, oh well, this this motherfucker's super goofy and he's always on academics page doing goofy shit, and that's popping. So I need to do goofy shit. Right. No. But hey, if that's your lane, nah, you're goofy already. If you think that, yeah. no, but a lot of artists People feel like that. People follow the 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 way. No, like not everyone's come up is the same. Yeah, there are people who like that's what they do. That's what they need. Yeah, that's how their career works. Yeah, I feel like it's that's more like, about the spectacle, less about the music. I feel like that's like the viral problem with artists sometimes. Yeah, like, but the problem, that's not even a problem. That's fine. Those artists can exist and it's all yeah. good. And let they them, can eat. But no, I mean, let like, them eat. It, like, like whether or not you decide to support them, that's on you. Yeah. But like they're they're winning. Let them win. Yeah, but that doesn't straight. mean that you can't win in your own way. You know what I'm saying? And to me, win bigger because I feel like it just diminishes you to a point. Like, motherfuckers like, do that shit. If you think of <laughs> like, like, the you, you biggest know I mean? rappers in the world, if you think of like the Mount Rushmore right now, mm. right? We're talking Drake, Kendrick, Drake, and Cole. Drake, Drake, Drake. And it's Drake. Drake, Kendrick, Cole. Yeah. And then Travis probably got that fourth spot. Travis is the only person that's cracked that mountain. You think Travis up there? Bro, he just did a McDonald's yeah, yeah, deal. Bro. What do you mean? He's the coolest motherfucker alive. As he moves, the, kids his, move. His merch going crazy, bro, too. He has the kids. Yeah, and that's Fortnite. really what no, you mean. He has the youth like no one has ever had the youth. Okay. Fortnite. Bro, he's got, a he's got the Like, Travis is the first artist that's cracked that tier mm-hmm. that isn't a superior MC. Gotcha. But Travis sonically. See, I know more about like his merch and shit. No, no, but shoes. Travis's music is strong. 
crazy. Yeah. Sonically, he's out of here. Like he was the reason why Yeezus sounded the way it did. Gotcha. Like, oh no, I heard he was writing a lot of motherfuckers shit back in the day. Bro, like, fuck yeah. When lifted lifted, uh when lifted we'd be working out of the spot in Sunny Slope, I rock spot. He like he'd be like, yo, there's this kid Travis. <laughs> Like we played five of five of the records off of Al Farrow on the air here in 2012. Yeah. And wow. had him call in. That's 2012. Crazy. He was wow. opening up for Casey Veggies. And motherfuckers can't even fathom grinding for five years. But this is the thing. Like, if you think of those, let's even take Travis, because it's really three. It's Cole, Kendrick, and Drake. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I just don't feel like the I, only reason you don't feel that way is because you know all the other three can out rap them. But what? No, Travis moves Drake. culture. Yeah. He moves culture, bro. He's what Kanye was like three or four years ago before Kanye really just started to. <laughs> no, but Travis I think moves that he has the that blueprint. Though. Travis moves the culture, bro. Yeah. Period. Nice. The motherfuckers had the hottest sneakers. He, bro, this fool had a Fortnite concert, McDonald's. Like, he's the only person to have his own McDonald's meal besides Michael Jordan. Yeah, and he was with a Kardashian and didn't go crazy. <laughs> hey, he was with a Kardashian and he still player after nigga. That's legendary. <laughs> but I say that I say all that to say, Travis makes quality music. Yeah, Drake, Kendrick, J Cole. It's all about quality, mm-hmm. right? Like it's about like they're gonna be here forever. Little Pump ain't gonna be here forever. He's gone. Pretty much already. people stopped caring, so he started to like in the last 12 months. Little Pump started to just do hella weird shit trying to get attention online, yeah. like painting his nails and getting alien haircuts and shit because that's what he needs. Yeah, because people don't give a fuck anymore. Yeah, so when you chase that short nut, right? That's what you get. You got you better get your bag for that 18 months mm-hmm. because if the music isn't timeless. Right. Then you ain't gonna be here. Yeah, big facts. Exactly. Bro. So like, take the long route and make sure your shit is forever. Are you thinking longevity, or are you thinking now? That's I mean, but hey, again, not everyone's the same. Yeah, you know, there's people who like mm-hmm. catch one, and I'm like, yo, I tell like that, like my, you know, my homie might be managing them or something, and mm-hmm. I'll be like, yo, perfect example. Remember, like a year and a half ago, Soldier Boy had that that moment. Yeah. <laughs> My homie was working with Soldier Boy and was thinking about shout out to my boy Theo. Theo was my boy Theo from E1 was thinking about managing Soldier Boy while he was viral with yeah. the Tiger, the Drake, Drake. all that shit, right? Yeah. But and shout I, out Soldier Boy, he's a legend, man. Yeah, legend. <laughs> For sure, right? He revolutionized MySpace and all that. The whole YouTube shit, I think. Yeah. You know, for sure. You know, but I remember telling him, like, the dude. He better like the music is horrible. Like the music you like doesn't. Any Soldier Boy music? Yeah, I mean, kiss me through the phone and shit. No, <laughs> yeah, bitch. Like, like y'all, bitch, y'all is one of the worst songs I've ever heard in my oh, life. Horrible. But with that being said, Soldier Boy out of nowhere had this viral moment where he went low key, just turned the fuck up, and then he kept every interview he would do, he would just say the wildest shit because that was his drug. Yeah. Because he was like, "Yo, people care again. Yeah. Let me just start calling everybody the fuck out." Right. But I told my boy, I said, bro, you better tell him to get grab all the bags he can get right now because the music they were playing me was horrible. I he was like, bro, the, watches? the <laughs> music does not match up to the viral shit yeah. and the viral shit will stop. So get the bags now. And yeah. that's OK. Yeah. Hey, at the end of the day, I always tell anybody, once you start getting the moment. Yo, certain artists got to grab all the bags they can because yeah. that's the only uh, window in their that's life right. that they're going to be able to get that. Yeah. You might have that two year window where you could get 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 breaded up. Nah, yeah. And, and, and most people have that two year window and they get all that money and then they fuck it off. Nah, that's why I like somebody. Like, right. That's why I like somebody like Markel, honestly, because he got that shit where it's like nigga could last forever. And truthfully, like I tell him, like somebody like Jay Z ain't even come on the scene until he was twenty six, right? Or we came on the scene already, but I mean, really bust, right, right, right. Like when he truly bust out that motherfucker, he already had the shit bubbling. So I, I look at artists like Bro, that, two or Jay Waves, or you know what I mean. Certain Jay Waves niggas, is fire. That nigga, him and Kel, Jay Waves is to crazy. me are are it, not yeah. it, because there's a few other people out here I fuck with. Vinos, so like, Vinos, don't dope. get it misconstrued. I got love for a lot of y'all niggas. I don't can name a lot of y'all, but I'm talking about just as far as that smooth player. No, J Waves is bringing them fire. bars where you can last for 20 years out this bitch. This nigga sitting right here for damn sure. And yeah, but you know how you know how that go. But 
to touch on that a little bit more, how you said accountability. I think consistency, also what you touched on that, and availability. Some motherfuckers don't even be available. They be the most talented motherfucker in the world, and you can't find them when it's going down because they right. somewhere tapped out oh, trust me, I on know. drugs or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Well, also, <laughs> like, you know, the other issue that people... I know a lot of Arizona people watch this. So, like, another big issue about Arizona hip-hop is it's like everybody has a they point the finger at someone else mm. like why they ain't more popping big facts like yo the radio don't play me bro fuck off bro like honestly fuck off bro yeah I've like listen the like way. the last mad at me but you say it. bro the very last thing any artist should worry about is getting played on the fucking radio that's like the last thing and you why should do you say that for them because think about this radio is a business mm -hmm. this is not a fucking this ain't charity fam yeah. You are competing on a playlist with the biggest artists in the world, right? Yeah. And the people who, who, who determine how the radio station makes money, the people who determine the ratings, understand the type of people that these people are, okay? There's a system called PPM. Mm -hmm. That is how radio stations are rated. PPM, Nielsen, who does all the ratings, they pay a certain select sample size of an audience in a city five bucks i think to carry around a fucking pager on their their hip a ppm meter on your hip that just tracks whatever you listen to to this day yes this is new by the way this it used to be yeah so so think about this the people who determine the livelihood of a radio station uh -huh. are the kind of people that would take five dollars to walk around with something like this hanging off of their pants for three months and catching wow. lights. So you could go to the grocery store and whatever radio station is playing in the grocery store, it reads that and it counts that listenership. But imagine the type of people who would take five dollars, okay. ten dollars, yeah. mm -hmm. not just normal people who ain't hit to what the fuck is going on. You understand what I'm saying? It's they like working people. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. Not a day. Overall, it's like it might be fifteen dollars. Here's fifteen dollars. Put this on your head. And you gotta carry this fucking thing around. Wow. Nobody who's cool and young and into. In the <laughs> no, no, no. Literally. I never even heard of <laughs> like that for real. It's you. Most it's called PPM. That's wild. Nobody who's young and hip and in tune on what's the hottest shit is wearing that fucking yeah. thing. Right. Period. Yeah. So, motherfuckers, like man. I got the hottest shit in the streets. Well, first of all, you don't. Let's be honest, okay? <laughs> Period. Period. Sec oh, I gotta keep going. I gotta. Second of all, do you think DJ Complex or whoever the fuck is running these radio stations, it's in their best interest for them to keep their job to put some no name motherfucker on the radio when they could instead play a song from Drake? I'm playing Drake. All day. This is this is not <laughs> this, no no this Am is like literally Drake? it's not a fucking charity. That's what people get this radio shit fucked up. Yeah, it's this is not this is a corporation's own radio stations for the most part, millionaires own radio stations. Yeah, right. And everyone's trying to keep their job and improve the ratings. Ratings are what matter, and that's how people keep their job. Yeah. Everything so if motherfuckers happens. in the middle of the afternoon decided. I'm going to just play a bunch of local rap shit. They'd get fired and they'd have horrible ratings, yeah. period. Yeah. So sense. that's why when there's shows like Friday Night Flavors or the shit that Oh Jesus was doing with Mad Rich. Shout out to Mad Bro. Rich. Mad Rich is yeah. the realist. Yeah, I love Mad Rich. Um, people will complain like that shit's on late at night. But 90% of the radio stations in the country that play hip hop music don't have that kind of show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's support. Yeah. That's See, those like people it, right? really trying to come in on a day that they don't have to be there. That's a day that those fools have off. They're not getting paid extra to go in for ground zero. Shout out. Yeah. Like That's Mad Rich show. doing that shit. Like Mad Rich show. has done every single underground hip hop show in Phoenix with me most of the time. Yeah. Me and him have done two different shows together. We did Ready Set Radio together. We did Friday Night Flavors together. Before that, he was doing Flavors. Mad Rich is a fucking legend. Yeah. Mad Rich is the reason why Ground Zero existed. Period. Man. So so these motherfuckers are going in on their day off. 
to support, to do what they can do. Yeah. Right? And people and are complaining. angry. I mean, like, I, bro, first of all, your music ain't ready for the radio. Second of yeah. all, second of all, like, stop worrying about radio. Because you yeah. know what that does? That let that gives you an excuse to point and say, man, look, I'd be way more bigger. Motherfuckers stay saying, man, shit was like Atlanta or New York or L.A. We'd be turned up. Bitch, listen to me. Right, we could make it like that. I know how it goes. First yeah, of all, I, I do radio in L.A., motherfucker. But what I'm saying is the artists that are moving the needle in the city, we're using our platform to help them. It just might not mean putting them in rotation. It might, it might mean, yo, fam, you're fired. Come up and freestyle. Yeah. And that shit will go viral. Or, or come up and let's have an interview that'll just be on our YouTube. But our YouTube is low-key more popping than the actual radio yeah, station. Yeah, nah, y'all YouTube be going fucking crazy. Like, almost breakfast club. Type but what I'm saying is, like, <laughs> that is, like, me and DJ Head saying, yo, we're with y'all. Yeah. But we also aren't, like, this is, like, like I said, like, we can, we can do what we can do, but what we're doing is genuine. It's like, yo, we're going to use our platform to push the LA motherfuckers we believe in every single second we get. And I've done the same thing for Arizona rappers. I've had V the Ruler come up to LA and freestyle. Yeah, I've uh, seen that, yeah. Uh, right, Merkums. Merkums. Uh, you know, Mega Ran. Um, I'm trying to think of the kid's name. Fuck. What's the kid's name who did the anime titties record? Uh, oh. J, J Bugs or, or, uh, I'm really mad I can't think of his name. D, D, D Borges. Bor- I don't know that you know, guy's name. I, I know what you're talking about. He got glasses. I actually got to look this up because I really fuck with this kid. And <laughs> yeah. No, I would actually like, I know if he watched this, he'd be offended because I really do like this kid a lot. Um, I, I know you're talking about. D, D Bangs. Oh, okay. So D Bangs, I was like, yo, fam, you fire. Come and rap. And he murdered it. Merkums. Yeah. Same thing. I was like, yo, Merkums, you're fire. Merkums looked like he was scaring the shit out of DJ. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, and he killed it, right? <laughs> yeah, he did. He fucking murdered it. Yeah, hell yeah. He but like, you know, like, and so that's like, did now did that go on the radio? No. Nah, of course. It was not. went up on our YouTube page. But that's me helping doing what I can with my platform mm-hmm. to push the that's a shine moment, dog. That's more yeah. love than motherfuckers could give them. But the problem the is, is rappers Exposing. here specifically like this whole war with the radio shit is so corny and like let me be clear on both sides it's corny right because the problem with a lot of these young radio personalities is they're entitled yeah mm-hmm. let me ask you a question if you're my people if i fuck with you pod son right yeah. imagine me coming up here and doing this podcast and then throwing it in your face that i did this podcast for you for the next year be like man, for I, I, man, you know what I'm saying? No, I'm up here because I fuck with you and I respect you. I respect what you're doing, and I was like, you know what? I launched a podcast, so now it makes sense. I got yeah. something I can talk about. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But imagine, like, if 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 I'm your boy, and every time I do something for you, I shove it in your face and say, "Well, you should be thankful. I helped you out." Right. Yeah. That's not real. That's not, That's not nah, genuine. Nah. Start asking hey, out of everybody during this entire couple year weird ass Arizona has been embarrassing me I promise you it's terrible not not talent wise I just mean in general like the one person who you never saw pop off on social media and look like a goofy was DJ Mad Rich Oh, because DJ Mad Rich's support is genuine this man has been doing this no he's been doing this for 15 years supporting local artists for 15 years so my thing is on both sides first of all if you're an artist and you think the only reason why you ain't popping is because you ain't getting played on power 98.3 or the beat or live 1015 you're delusional Delusional. you need a fan base brother and if you think it's a good idea to go at them go at them and make enemies with these people that's a horrible idea horrible like yo why burn a bridge for what but you know what it is a lot of these motherfuckers started this fuck power shit, started trending, and it's, oh, this shit is working for me. I'm getting attention because I'm more with the radio station. Yeah. So let me turn that shit up. Nah, that shit ain't. Man, motherfuckers would tag me in that shit. I was like, don't tag me in that. I don't, I said, you don't even want to hear my thing. But what I'm saying is like, <laughs> both sides could have done much better. Nah, the artist and the radio. You're Bro. right. But at the same time, it's like you said, the radio don't owe the artists nothing. The radio, if anything, should have just kept the fuck up out of it and not even entertain the fucking conversation. Because truthfully, the advertisers is the only person you need to be worried about impressing. 
this is the bottom line, right? If you're supporting local hip hop for the fucking for va va vanity reasons, so you can like, you know, feel good about yourself when you when you are talking your shit on Twitter and yeah. all this. You're not doing it. Like you should do something else. Nah, thanks. Like, you're not. You're. It's not conducive yeah, sure. to actual success. Listen, when I did, when I was, genuine. when I was doing, my, you can ask Ramses. You could ask anybody, whoever. When I was out here at Power, and we were doing our like that same show, just mm -hmm. called different, essentially, but we were playing like dope underground shit. I was so selective. Mm -hmm. I was so selective on who I brought up to the station. I'm talking like the local rap shit, like the way that 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 these fools was playing local rap shit. That wasn't me. Yeah, because you know what I would tell these motherfuckers? Look, bro, I'm gonna support you because you're dope, not because you're from Arizona. Yeah, yeah fact. For sure. So there was a very short list of artists in 2012, 2013, even further back, 08, 09, that we would be like, yeah, yeah, like you're fire, futuristic. Yeah. You could ask futuristic. You know, he'll Shout tell you Zach, Zach time. Sincerely, Collins. Yeah. Um, Actually, I got questions about Collins. That's I'm sure you. I'm. We'll, oh, we'll get to that. Yeah, I got <laughs> oh, we could get Colin. to that all day. Uh, who else was dope back then? There was this kid named Junior that was fire. Um, who else? There was just like I would be like, yo, I only want to support people that I, I would support if I was on the radio in Kansas too. Yeah. Not just because they're from AZ. Right. Yeah. Right. V the ruler. Perfect example. You know, V's like my guy, but yeah, I remember here, bro, when I heard V early, like, I was like, yo, this motherfucker is a monster. You could ask V, V will tell you, I'm, I fucking set up that whole deal with him and Kid Ink. Yeah, oh, he told me. Yeah, he yeah, that's like my brother, brother. V's yeah, like exactly. one of, like, lyr lyrically, one of the hardest motherfuckers in the game. Shy moment, by the way. Yeah, he did say that. Yeah. V is incredible, right? But those are the artists that I got behind because I was like, yo, these guys can be here for a long time. As opposed to being like Hannibal Leck was somebody who was an OG at the time, yeah. who I was fucking with heavy. Hannibal's a, a killer, you know what I'm saying? But there was other artists that like. But you fuck with artists like that too, even if you feel like like they like. Not because Hannibal, like I would hear Hannibal's music, and at the time Hannibal was working with Lifted and like had some shit that I was like, oh Hannibal's a, like Hannibal had such a distinct voice and delivery that I was like, but I and all the people you're talking about, like that older wave, bro. I tried to you, fucking Willie North Pole juice all them. I bro, I was putting off of them fools. Yeah. Early. I, shout out Willie. Willie's a big reason why I yeah, started everything. Willie. I started. Bro, Willie's a legend. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder right? you might have met my pops at some point. Nah, Willie's a legend, man. You heard of Ill Fate Records back in the day? Mm. Bro, yeah, was, when Willie first started a pop with like Man Up Squad, it, I was like a bum. I was like maybe 18, like at the radio station, like mm -hmm. not in the mix at all. I ended up trying to get Willie. Like me and him started to build a relationship because I tried to put him on a show. I was doing radio in Boise, Idaho. <clears throat> That's crazy. And I was trying, and his out his album was about to drop to connect. Yeah. And I was out there trying to blow his shit up because I was like, yo, this is the only look we've ever had. Yeah, facts. Yeah. Right? Facts. And then uh, you know, he ended up no showing the show. And then Juice drove out with all of Black Wall Street and did the show instead. So, it was, uh, shout out Richie, man. Sad. And it's crazy, bro. I, Willie was too into himself back then because he was. <laughs> Doing, you know, I'm telling you, like I seen is, this nigga so, as a kid. Like you know, I, let, let me tell you about about Willie. I don't ever think Willie was too into himself because I used oh, to be able was. to. He might have been he was. because at the time when when Willie had that run, I was living in Idaho in yeah. Vegas, and Vegas. So like, but I I never had that experience with Willie where he was like, I could always get a hold of Willie. Yeah, but I do feel like at the time his management. Was it Tiffany already? It was Tiffany. Okay. I yeah. thought they could have did better. And Tiffany's fire. Shout out to her. You know, yeah. she works with a uh, hit maker now and like she's doing yeah, her thing. She had beef with my pop, so I don't fuck with her. So but I think, like, um, I think Willie, I also think the Connect wasn't a very good album. Yeah. Nah, it was straight. It body marked up was easily the best shit on there, which is. No, Hood Dreamer. I, oh, lying. Think about this. Think about this. No, no, no. Yes. But think about this. If Hood Dreamer came out a year later when B.O.B. was popping, that shit would have been yeah. out of here. And number one side chick, when Steve McNair got killed, B.T. pulled the plug. On a video, so that was. I thought album. Willie's album had some shit on it, but it was it was disappointing. Yeah, overall. I was like, nah, but, it's but, just way harder before. But that, what he way should, harder. Way harder. But what he should have did was just keep going. Yeah, like the connect came out and it disappointed, and instead of like, 
But Remember you know what, what I told you earlier about people starting to second guess themselves? Yeah. Nah, bro. Just keep going. You know, at that Lil, time, you could have put a mixtape out in the streets. Lil Wayne kind of held up Body Marked Up and it fucked up the momentum. The first time I heard Body Marked Up was like early 06. Yeah, we're playing it on. It was the street. Early. It was in rotation when I was an intern. Yeah, and when like I was, this was I think it busted in like 07, but the original version had Lil Wayne on it, but he never cleared it. And he thought Luda was just going to get it cleared and he didn't. And then. That that new version, that's not Lil Wayne. That's somebody else saying like body marked up. Like it sounds like Wayne. Bro, when not, Willie North Pole, I thought it was Wayne. No, when, it never got clear. Never when, got- when Willie had that verse on Luda's album, call up the homies. Call up the homies. That was oh, such a moment for me yeah. as an Arizona guy. I was like, oh my God, we got something. And game couldn't have could have easily not did the record. Because you remember Willie Dixon? Mm-hmm. What? Oh, he called him know. gay. Oh, Bro, right. I swore at that point in time when it was Hot Rod, Juice, and Willie, I'm like, one of these three gonna make it. it man, it should honestly, it could have been Willie, it could have been Juice, and I got my own like opinions. Like, I feel like he never needed to be with the game. He, he oh, Juice, oh yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think the thing with Juice is another thing too is like I just went and listened to Juice's album maybe like a month and a half ago at Salt Mine, and like Juice is like another guy who overthinks everything. I, be, I, be, I told him the same thing. Hell of a yeah. Like, bro, you've been sitting on some of these songs for like five years, bro. Like, put them out. Yeah. Like, finally, he's starting to put shit out. But instead of like, he could have been dropping shit the whole last decade. But he's been so like, I don't know, particular yeah. or just overthink shit. Man. All right. And Juice you. is fire. Hey, you giving too much consulting to these guys now. No, man. bro. All, Juice is the first guy I ever went to with a strip club and he gave me a thousand dollars in ones. A boss. That's one thing I bro. Rich. I was bro, Juice handed me a thousand dollars in ones at, at the Sonny's in Chandler. And, and I was like, boss. I threw like half of it and pocketed the rest. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sean moment <laughs> that there. That's a smart nigga, man. Some people be out here, hey. I'm about to blow all no, this shit. Hell no, nigga. Right. I'm paying a bill with this shit. And Juice, <laughs> hey, Juice is still fire. <clears throat> still, still a beast. And I know he's working on his new shit. And I I I will never call him Richie. Richie. Yeah, you don't like you like the juice name? He should have kept Juice McCain. That was fire. Yeah, that shit was fire. But um, and then you know, I don't know. I know Willie was trying to get some dark nation shit started again. Yeah, yeah. Willie doing some shit. Um, I don't know what I think Hot Rod sells sneakers. I honestly don't know what Hot Rod does. That's um, the only one. And I know that it, you remember the other nigga Sin Q? Did you know about him? Oh yeah, that fool's a beast. Mike Rashad. Mike Rashid, no. <laughs> that motherfucker, I follow him on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. That motherfucker is swole. I literally, bro, I'm telling you, so my pops. Like, and then even Judge, 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 man, Judge also. Shout out to Judge. I got to get a podcast from him, actually. I don't fuck with the South Side enough. I that song, Hell Yeah, one. was so fire. Yeah. And I think he had a bad situation with whoever he was signed to out here, and they fucked him. Was this when he was with Amari or whatever? No, no, after. Oh. That's why he. I think that's why he had to change his name. Oh, to Louis. See, everybody be having to change their damn name, man. It but was uh, nah. le- it was some legal shit. Yeah, and it's crazy, bro. But um, oh, wow. this is such good fucking content. But yeah, I don't even want to. We, hey, we giving him and shout out to Judge, a fucking legend out here, a Southside legend, and he's that, one bro. of the best motherfuckers I've ever met. Humble as fuck. That dude never popped off on the weirdo shit. Super good dude, man. Yeah. Nah, and that's that's truly the type of people I fuck with, bro. And, like and you said, know, a lot of people's story ain't over yet. Yeah, no, nah, no, but until you dead, your damn story really ain't over. Like, even well, no, some dead. people's story, I mean, we can probably put a bow. We can probably put a bow. I don't think Hot Rod, I don't think Hot Rod makes music anymore. Oh, it does. But oh, yeah. But- no, no, I don't think, I, no, I, I, Hot Rod's a nice guy. Yeah. I just don't think he's pursuing yeah, music. His musical oh, story is. I think he's just doing other shit, and yeah. that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Nah, ain't there's no reason to look down on that. Like, dude had a cool little run. Like, you know, got his bread, and like, you know, yeah. he's content with. Man, I heard so many okay. funny stories from Willie about like living in Fifty Cent house. Yeah. And, oh, I've heard the same ones. <laughs> yeah. Crazy ass shit. We'll talk off camera about most of that shit. But um, all right. So just to keep it real quick. So let's talk about when you used to work at power 98. And then after that, I want to go to the other markets you used to you moved to after that. So I worked at power from Oh five to the end of Oh eight. So like Oh five wow. to Oh nine, I was an intern. I worked for free for two and a half years. I was on the street team. I was showing up and doing the nuts in the morning show for free for like 14 months. I literally didn't make any money at that radio station. Good. Zero dollars. Yes. Then they put me on the street team 
And so I'd get paid to go to street hits and I could drive a vehicle, but I still wasn't getting paid to come in and do the morning show every day, but I was still coming in. They would throw me remotes and shit, you know, but like, so I did that shit. Um, shout out to Joey Boy and Jay Filla and Mad Dog and Bruce St. James, Carly Hustle. Um, Carly Hustle. <laughs> no, so at the time, I was, bro, we were, me and Ramses were doing Friday Night Flavors and I was like young. I was probably 19, man, like 20 fucking bitches all over that radio station. Shy moment. Bro, I had sex every room at that station, bro. You been in that lobby? If there's a couch is red still in there, that thing was uh, soiled. With that being said, I was young. I had just uh, graduated high school and I kind of I, I worked my ass off, but I did not understand that like you gotta like you ain't untouchable because you're young. Yeah. So like I would say like my last year there, I was just like sloppy. I was like missing meetings and like doing shit with bitches on the like I, like these motherfuckers would check the cameras and be like, "Yo, you had four females up there at three a.m. Like what the fuck, right?" And then I missed a meeting and Bruce St. James fired me. Yeah. And Bruce is like one of my like oh, biggest like I love Bruce. Yeah. But he said you need this right now. He's like, I'll hire you. I'm gonna hire you again, or or like you'll be fine but like right now you need this so at that point in time Dang. i had like a newborn baby and shit and uh well my son was probably like three when i got fired but i was working at the station as an intern when my son was born so what was that yeah but uh so I, I got fired and then i got hired in boise now i was probably gonna leave power anyway and they knew that because mm-hmm. i was gonna probably take that job because at the time Everybody at the radio station was under contract. I was like the hottest shit at the station, right? But I was a part-timer. So if J times three called in or Carly called in, I was the guy who'd fill in, Yeah. right? But there was no slots for me. It, Sandra Pena had just signed a deal at nights. There was just nowhere yeah. for me to go in the immediate future. Yeah. I would have had to have just sat around and- But they like, should have been- No, so I was talking with Boise. They launched a hip hop <laughs> station in Boise. And everybody, like for me, I was like, I just got to get a full-time gig because in radio, it's important that you have that on your resume. Yeah. So I was like, let me just get this shit out the way. I ended up getting fired while talking to them. So I wasn't tripping yeah, as much because nah. I already had the gig lined up. I went to Boise, Idaho. I did afternoons there for a year. And I told them I, I hated it. But I told myself I got to do The area or the station? No, I just hated the idea of like not being in Phoenix. I'm gotcha. like, I'm like such a Phoenix motherfucker. Yeah. Right. So I was just like, Man, like I just felt like like FOMO type shit. Yeah. And like I said at the time, fucking I missed the All Star game when it was in Phoenix. I was in oh fucking, man, bro, I was in Boise, Idaho while the fucking All Star game was. In I was Phoenix. seventeen outside of everything. Just- right. <laughs> so, so, um, I went to Boise. Um, at the time, I got hired by somebody who I really don't fuck with anymore. Mm. His name is Mikey Fuentes. Um. They made me drop the bootleg from my name because it was too urban. Oh wow, too black! God damn! So like you can't be, you can't be too cool for the room out here. It's Boise, and I was like, whatever, bro. Let me just get this. I was making twenty five thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. I had my fucking at the time my baby mama my my kid out there with me, and I was like, yo, I gotta I gotta like I'm I'm as soon as I got there I was looking for my way looking out. To get out yeah. Literally right away I was sending air checks out. I was like, okay, I got my like. So I was there for 14 months and then I went to Vegas. Mm-hmm. Sharita Salisbury hired, hired me in Vegas at High 97.5. And that's that job really changed my life. Yeah. Um, because when I was there is when I really I, me and another DJ named Peter Parker were the only two guys in the country that were putting everything on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So had it occurred. I had like my flip cam. Every you can go back and watch all my old interviews, right? They're all on a little flip cam. Some of them I was holding, like I interviewed DJ Khaled, like holding the camera. <laughs> Shy moment, baby. Um, I feel but, like DJ Khaled, like he remind me, and I look up to him a lot, like a little bit older version of you. Nah, like, he's a guy. Yeah, he's the hardest working motherfucker. Yeah, I, re- I admire that motherfucker. Period. Yeah, yeah. He deserves everything he got, bro. When I see people talking shit about Khaled, I'm like, y'all have no idea how hard this man works. With that being said, 
Thanks, so in Vegas, my shit started to pop. Like I was booming out there. My I ran the like my interviews were ran the blog scene. It was like me and like two other people. But every interview I had was on Two Dope Boys, Rap Radar, yeah, uh, NowWrite.com. So I, I started to really get a lot of notoriety. All this meanwhile, still doing an underground hip hop show, but in Vegas now called Ready Set Radio. Yeah. Um, and then just building relationships, and then like that's where I first got notoriety was Vegas. And then, and then that's like when, you know, Justin Bieber came and freestyled on my show. Shy moments. Yeah. Like, I had a lot of, and then Kendrick, like, I think I might have been, like, we were for sure the first, like, you could ask E, J. Cole's team, like, we were, like, so early on that Cole, Kendrick wave, like, mm -hmm. all of the TDE shit. Um, and at the time, like, even, like, shit, Dizzy Wright. We was playing Dizzy Wright in Vegas when he was Dizzy D. Flashy, because he's from Vegas. Wow. And um, I didn't even know he was from Vegas. Yeah, that was from Vegas. About DZD flashing. Well, that that full, there, but like at that time, I was so in love with Vegas. I love the culture there. The fucking hip hop scene was crazy. Mm -hmm. It was so dope to me. There was a kid named Sean Rose, Interstate Fats, who's about to drop an EP on Ready Set the Label. He's locked up right now on September 18th. Um, there was like this ill ass energy about Vegas, and I didn't want to leave Vegas. I owned, I owned a house there. The yeah. first time I ever bought a crib was there, and the lady I worked for, shout out to Tampa, right? No, no, no. Uh -oh. Shout out to Sharita. Sharita was my OPD who has her flaws. She's a, a, probably one of the more unstable human beings I've ever worked with. <laughs> but I got love for her forever because she really took me out of Idaho. She mm -hmm. was like, she said, I need a white boy with swag. Flew me to Vegas and was like, you got the job. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that station was so instrumental to like everything that I have now. And at the time I had zero interest in leaving Vegas, but my boss, this girl Sharita was fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. Like she was like, made it really hard for me to like, she would like disrespect me type shit. So she said some wild ass shit to me one day. And at the time, Mikey Fuentes, the guy who hired me in Boise had moved to Phoenix mm -hmm. and was at power. Yeah. Right. So he had been trying to get me to go back to power for like six months. And we didn't meet up on the money. But I was like keeping him kind of close. You know, I worked with him in Boise. We had we had no problems. Like, mm -hmm. but my shit was so I loved Vegas. But this bitch popped off on me one day, bro. And I called my I called yeah. Mike. I called Mikey and I was like, hey, hey, is, what's up with that job? Like, well, fuck it, I'll come home. Yeah. So I fucking cracked a mic on a Sunday. I interviewed Ludacris. It was Memorial Day weekend or Labor Day weekend? 2000 and, oh, it was Memorial Day weekend of 2012. And I cracked, I interviewed Luda. The only reason I didn't tell that bitch to fuck off when she disrespected me was because I had an interview with Ludacris yeah. on, on like Saturday. I was like, I got to interview Luda. Yeah, I got it. You, yeah. you ain't going to ruin this for me. So I interviewed Luda and then my weekend shift started and I cracked the mic and I said, hey, y'all. Because usually in radio, you're you're not supposed to. They don't like if I were to go into a radio station and be like, yo, I'm leaving. That's it. You'll never hear from that person again. It's like it's like they died. Yeah. Every like no one ever gets to no say two week. Notice. No, nobody ever gets to say goodbye on the air. They just disappear. So me knowing that and being on some fuck you type shit, I cracked the mic my last break of my show. And I was like, you know, I gave I talked for like three or four minutes respectfully. I didn't say anything negative about the station mm -hmm. or Sharita because I really do appreciate Sharita. Um, but I was like, this is the last time, you know, y'all are going to hear me on this station. Like just, and then I hit send on my resignation email and I never went back. <laughs> yeah. I moved back Sign to Phoenix. Sign moment, goddamn. No, so then I moved back to Phoenix and like, um, I was at Power from 2000 and June of 2012 to September of 2013. And um, it was a very... Uh, bittersweet time because I was home and like running the city out here running the clubs and like you know breaking futuristic and V and mm -hmm. you know really felt like we had like a crazy movement going you know what I'm saying and um, I don't know what happened with, uh, with, with, with that situation I'll tell you what happened I'm gonna keep it funky with you. What Collins? No, 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 no. Oh, wait. Nah, okay. We can get to that later. All right, yeah, keep going. We still on the radio shit. So at the time, right? Power 
it's hard for them to get good ratings. Now that's not because they're not a good radio station. Yeah. It's because their signal is not very strong. Right. Back in the day, power 92.3 used to have a hundred thousand watt signal. So you can hear it everywhere. Like yeah. you can drive to fucking LA down there and hear yeah, 92.3, yeah. right? 98.3. We all know is fucked up. You can't even drive around where the radio station is at. And, and, and it come through clear. Yeah. Again, that has nothing to do with anyone who works there. It's just a bad signal, right? Mm -hmm. Radio stations have bad signals. Power has been a, 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 a enough of a, a good station to where they have thrived, stayed alive and been profitable despite not having the strongest signal. Mm -hmm. So when I was there, it was a weird era they had put MC Magic and this dude Eli on in the morning, and it was just kind of weird. Like, yeah. <laughs> it on and and Magic is my fucking nah, dog, Magic, bro. Man. I love Magic, and it was like, all right, that's cool. And in the afternoons, I'm lighting shit up. Yeah, so you should be the morning show. No, no, no. I don't ever want to be the morning show. No, no. I prefer to just do my thing. Let the morning show have all that pressure. Morning show pressure is a lot, bro. Yeah. And shout out to Magic. Magic did a really good job at that show despite not having radio experience, killed it. Mm. So shout out to him. But at the time, the station was just, it was just, it was just kind of weird. My, my brother Jello was doing nights and I was killing shit in the afternoons. Again, everything I was doing going viral on the internet, yeah. everything. Bro, I had, a, I, I had a day where I had Fabulous and Pusha T on it, on, 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 in the studio, interviewing both of them and then having them interview each other. And this motherfucker comes in, my program director comes in and it's like, yo, you're wasting time interviewing two irrelevant artists. This when they was on a tour. Too. When they yeah. when they hit Club Red. Yeah. This was 2013, bro. And I, I remember saying to myself, like, I don't want to work here. <laughs> no, 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 no. I loved working there, despite that, right? But I was like, dog, I guess, mind you, I'm just doing me. So anybody comes to town. I'm running around. I'm bro. If I can't interview him at the station, I'm going to the venue. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we had a, a there was one night where we had a Miguel show. I remember I ran back and forth from the Miguel show to like whatever rap ass concert was happening at the same time. It might've been tech nine or something. Mm -hmm. And I like, I was yeah. like back and forth between like marquee and celebrity theater, just making sure I could get bo like both interviews. Working my ass off. Yeah, but again, moment, bro. made the source Power 30. First year I made it was in 2013 at Power. Mm -hmm. Giving that station real national love and credit. The key word is credibility. Nationally in the hip hop scene. Yeah. Right? Credibility. At that time, I'm the only credibility at that radio station. Yeah. I'm talking, I'm not talking about like magic has credibility in the community here in Phoenix. Yeah. No, I mean like nationwide credibility to oh, a radio yeah. station, right? And I, 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 at the time, I had no idea. And and you know, uh, Corey VIP Enterprises. Yeah, and, yeah, old ass nigga. Yeah. So Corey, <laughs> me, playing. so I'll me, fucking with him. so me, Corey, and Davion. Yeah, old ass nigga three. <laughs> and Jello built up. Ocean, I know you Ocean Seven, old, Ocean Seven. You remember Ocean Seven? Yeah, yeah. So we had that bitch booming, bro. Mm. I'm talking like crazy. I was 18. Yeah, you had you low key had what was it? Cameo before? After that, Cameo was after. You had that bitch busting. That yeah. was when I was in the clubs. Yeah, that's they would be I'm... like the bootleg Kev hour is start or some shit. Like, bro, I had so many celebrities go to Cameo. Bro, I remember like that. Jeezy, Wiz, everybody for free. But no, um, so. The program director, Mikey Fuentes, and Corey, yeah. they get into it. At the time, Corey is a client at the radio station, right? Mm -hmm. They get into it, and I'm making great money DJing for VIP Enterprises. I'm making like $1,200 a week. For me at the time, that's fucking great. Yeah, I'm making a lot of money. A lot of money. Just for what? On the side. Yeah. So Mikey Fuentes tried to essentially tell me I couldn't DJ for him no more because the station and, and, and him were beefing. And I was like, that ain't even my deal, man. Y'all can't tell me what I'm doing on a Saturday night, right? I didn't know that all of these little things that I didn't think about, because I'm killing it. I'm literally busting my ass for this radio station. 
all these little things are building up some weird animosity this dude Mikey Fuentes started to have towards me, right? Mind you, I'm thinking we're cool in the gang. This dude has his boat at my house. Like, I, I, I have my fan. He knows my kids. I've worked yeah. for him in two cities. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking, like, we're family. Yeah. Right? September 1st, 2013, there's an Iggy Azalea free show at, at Monarch. Right? This is like right when the source power 30 shit happened. And there's a guy who works at the station named Todd. Todd is the sales manager. Okay. And mind you, Todd can say whatever he wants to say, but there was witnesses at this. Dion McBean was there. D'Angelo was there. A lot of people saw what happened. So Todd and me have a very cool relationship where we fuck with each other. We bust balls. He talks shit. I talk shit. Like, like some like real like homie to homie yeah. type humor, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I fuck with Todd. You know, by all means, a good dude. Like I got nothing personal against Todd. It's uh, we're outside. It's hot as fuck. He's talking shit. Ah man, fuck you, bootleg. The source ain't shit, bro. Like that shit ain't been popping for a while. And I'm like, man, fuck you, right? Like you made the dub magazine. No, but we just talking shit. <laughs> yeah, I know. I ain't yeah. taking this serious, mind you. This is my guy. Yeah. Right. So I took a cap of water and I poured it down the back's neck when he turned around. He, this fool turns around and clotheslines me, bro. Clo this is the sales manager. <laughs> and the security saw the whole thing. By the way, that security guard still works at Monarch. Oh, wait. Is it Mike? Uh, older black dude. dude. Yeah, older black dude. He's been there forever. Yeah, yeah got Mike. braids and yep, shit. Mike. Yep. Yep. So, he hella serious. Bro, everybody sees everything. <laughs> I jump up like, you know, we start, I'm like, bro, what the fuck? We start cussing each other. He starts loking up like he's a gangster. This yeah. is the sales manager, someone who I thought was my friend. And I'm like, look, security saw the whole thing and they said, you got to go. So they told him he had to leave. Yeah. First thing I do, call Mikey Fuentes. He's my boss. He wasn't there at the time. He was in Idaho visiting his kids. Me and D'Angelo call him together because Jello was standing next to me when this happened. Explain to him exactly what happens. Like, mind you, I was, this fool Todd was supposed to come to a fantasy football draft that night. Like, we were all, like, the homie. Todd's no longer invited to the bar. No, no, no. I've seen Todd, and for whatever reason, I don't know if there was a bunch of, like, built-up shit that he had towards me that just came out at that moment in time. I don't know. But, like, I don't have problems with Todd. It is what it is. Like, you know what I'm saying? We work together. Like, that shit definitely made me, like, learn like how to deal with people you work with like these yeah. motherfuckers ain't your friends nah hell no nah. yeah. but i tell mikey fuentes hey this is what happened bro this shit is crazy my neck is scratched up i got marks on my neck like like not like red mark like scratches like, yeah so i'm like fuck they're gonna fire todd so i tell mikey the first thing i told him was bro me and todd just got into this jello telling him what happened he's like you don't got nothing to worry about I was like, dude, for real, I don't know what it happened with Todd, but like, I don't want to see nothing happen to him either. Like, still being real. Let's just talk to him. Like, we could talk. I go to work. So that happened on the first. This is Labor Day weekend. Monday, we're off, right? I'm not on the air Monday. I come into work Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I'm on the air for like an hour and a half. Todd tries to talk to me before I go on the, on the air. And mind you, I'm thinking I could trust this guy, Mikey, because he told me, I got you. You got nothing to worry yeah. about. Todd sees me in the hallway, pulls me into the mixing room, and on, a, on some genuine shit, in, in retrospect, was like, yo, Kev, look, fuck what happened. Like, they're talking about firing you, bro. And I was like, Wait, bro, I was, he was like, let's, you and me right now go into Jose Rodriguez' office and let's tell him it's all good. And I was like, dude, Todd, like, I don't know, bro. Like, I got to talk to Mikey. Like, I'm, I am I don't know if he's trying to set me up. You know what I'm saying? But I should have listened to him. He was being genuine at that moment in time, telling me, like, bro, they're going to fire you. Like, let's go talk to them and tell them we're good. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes later, this fool Mikey comes into the office like, hey, man, get your shit. Yo, we, uh, Ho Jose, who at the time was the general manager, was zero tolerance policy for what happened you're you're out and at the time i had just gotten written up over the last year for the dumbest shit i got written up for not signing a commercial log which everybody 
doesn't do. They fuck that shit is super, yeah. super common. And I got written up for playing me and DJ Nicasio played a prank on each other on the air where I gave out his personal cell phone number and told people to text for free Rick Ross tickets. Yeah. <laughs> and then he did the same thing. He was replying to people, giving them my number. And it was like funny. But they but then power was like mad. And, this, you know, because now all these people thought they got free Rick Ross tickets. And so but but guess what happened? I, me and Nicasio, out of our pocket, bought Rick Ross tickets for all those people. Yeah, and like, man, man so, you know what? Hey, so listen, so that was the two strikes against me. Those two things. You know, what I was doing for the station and what I was doing in the streets and, and the ratings ha had no merit. You was way ahead of power, bro. So what happened way was, so, so this, this is where things get, get dicey. Mikey Fuentes puts it all on the GM, Jose Rodiles. That Wednesday... There's an all staff meeting the day after I got fired. Motherfuckers are in the meeting crying. Natasha Castles is in there crying. And he's like, look, she's a cutie. She's like, er, <laughs> Mikey tells everybody I tried to save his job. Jose wasn't having it. So mind you, me being me, I'm like, fuck, bro. Like I was making so much money. I just love being here yeah. at home. And so I send Jose Rodiles, the GM, a very long email in which I, first of all, the HR shit, the fact that I had scratches on my neck and there was witnesses and nobody like, like, wait, what? The other dude just got suspended. So I sent him an email essentially just being like, look, man, like, I would at least like to have the opportunity to speak to you and explain to you what happened. Like, you know, I'm sorry if I disappointed you. Yeah. You know, like, I apologize. Like, whatever. Trying to save my job. This fool writes me an email back and says, Kev, you know, I fuck with you. Um, Unfortunately, this this was Mikey Fuentes' decision, and I just backed wow. up my program director. So this motherfucker is a fraud. He's lying to me, Buster. lying to everybody. Wow. Now, even after that, me and him squashed our beef. I put that shit to the side for the, for the sake of like, I don't know. Like, you know what, Mikey, maybe I was being, maybe I was, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. I put that shit to the side. Where's Mikey from? That fool's from San Diego. I got a, I don't even. I don't even got no like real beef with dude. Like I just choose not to fuck with. That's him. like rock. No, or somebody doing me like that. Like no, no, no. And this is the thing. I set all that shit aside. You need a switcher. Yeah. There's another reason, like why I don't fuck with him, that we won't talk about. But even after me squashing my beef with him, like I thought we were cool, because like I said, I looked up at this dude kind of like a father figure, low key. Like this dude hired me at yeah. two different places. He's been in my been around my kids, like. I'm fucking bro. I was depressed after I got fired from power for like six months. Like I was sad, bro. Yeah. That shit fucking. And you chose to come back home. Like bro. it wasn't like you had to. Like so I go to Tampa to do That's big for one. Tampa. No, no, no. I know it's not as big as LA, but no. So at the time I was like, okay, I don't know. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like, but I was like, the station I went to in Tampa was. It's one of the biggest radio stations in the country, WLLD. Mm -hmm. The program shine, director, that's big shine moment. The program director of Orlando is one of the most respected guys in the whole business of radio. Hey, Florida different, by the way, huh? Oh, yes. Florida amazing. is way different. But <laughs> I went there and and I honestly was very uh like the first six, seven months, I didn't like it because it wasn't Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And I went no, I went over the Phoenix shit. Yeah. But like once I embraced it, bro, Tampa was incredible. Um, I killed it there again. Just I love being there. That was probably one of my favorite experiences ever working somewhere. A lot of culture, man. That's the thing about just Florida, good people. Bro. The station was was a great atmosphere. Um, I had great coworkers. It was a family. Like Orlando got got out the way and just let me do me. And it, and it was never no uh, like. Like sometimes you'll work with somebody like Mikey Fuentes is the mm -hmm. kind of guy who has to have the biggest dick in the building. Yeah. It's some ego shit. Yeah, it's ego. With that being said, I, I go and I work for this other guy, Orlando, who's like the total opposite. And mind you, this guy does mornings on the radio station too. Yeah. And he could have totally been a dick. But he will, I mean, mind you, me and him would butt heads about shit, but it wasn't on no like ego weirdo shit. It was yeah. just on some like, look, man, you just gotta like I do shit my way. Like let's respect like and 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 so I thrived over there, loved it. Um, I ended up a year into my contract, no, about mm -hmm. nine months into my deal in Tampa. Doc Winter from LA calls me. This is wow. 2015. 
Shy moment. No, no. I this know is, who he is because of Big Boy. No, this is 2014. That's the only reason I know who he is because of right. Big Boy. So 2014, me and Doc start talking. And mind you, this is probably around the era where I still was not like really fucking with Tampa like that. I was still kind of new. And I was like, man, I miss the West Coast. Like, And my dream's always been to get to LA yeah. just to try it. That's crazy. You know? That was your dream? Yeah, yeah. It was like one of my dreams was like, to, to get to LA. And so um, Doc Winter calls and he's like, look, we want you to do the afternoon show here, but we're in the middle of a lawsuit with power over big boy because they took big boy from power 106 mm. and there was this crazy lawsuit. So he was like, technically you're under contract. So the only way that we could do this is if you just go to your station and you're just honest with them and you tell them, hey, look, I have a, a, a big opportunity here. Can I, will you guys let me walk? Mm -hmm. So I go in and sit with the, uh, the GM at the radio station in Tampa. And I'm like, hey, look, man, this is my dream job. Like, I'm just, I, I, I'm trying to go back. I'm trying to go to LA. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you're number one. You're staying here. Like, you're in a contract. Hell no. So they pretty much blocked me to going to LA. Yeah. So at that point in time, I was extremely like, I was obviously like, damn, like, you know, cause a lot of this shit is about luck and about right time, right place. Right. I mean, for sure. Right. Timing is everything. So I'm like, shit, this might've been one of my only chances to go to LA. But what I did was make sure that like, I kept my relationship with Doc super solid. Mm -hmm. And like, I'd go, I'd just pull up on him at the station, like fly out to LA, just tap, tap yeah. in with him. And, uh, I'm see my boys here. Oh shit. Will you go get my boy, David? Yeah, he was outside. Is already. he here? Somebody just came in. It sounded like. But no, we Tell me! You ain't got too much more time anyway. We're going to wrap up soon. We, and, and I bro, I love how... But I, media people are the best because they know how to articulate themselves. My bad, bro. Cop a squat. Beautifully. No, you no, no. I mean? So, long story short, Tampa situation ended. I ended up going to LA. Um, but in, in order for me to go to LA, I had to work on the weekends first. Mm -hmm. So I would... I moved back to Phoenix and I was doing club shit here. And then uh, I was driving to LA every weekend to do this just one shift a week. Yeah. And um, and then that ended up overall. I mean, I, I did nights at Live One One Five for like a month and a half. Yeah. During that same window. Ain't that in the same building as Power? No, oh, no. Live One One Five is oh, uh, no, out here. I don't really know. Anyway, no. So <laughs> long story short, I ended up ended up being in LA. You know, they called me and they like Doc was like, look, we're gonna make a move with the night show. Like we want you to, you know, you you are our first choice in the first place. So we want you to come yeah. and like full time. Bro, so it's big, been big good. Shine. I just resigned. Yeah. I no, just the fact you said it's your dream. Right. Like that was your yeah, but dream. dream and guess what? Dreams change. Yeah. And yeah. You know, when you accomplish them, motherfuckers, a lot of people don't never accomplish their goddamn dreams. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a lot of people gonna always go to sleep wishing they was doing some shit like that or such and such. You know what I'm saying? Nah, so, the LA shit has been great. I just uh I just resigned for another three years. So um, I work with a great, you know, my co-host DJ Head is a great dude. Uh, you sound like Kobe, man. Hey, you know, actually, I did have one question I wanted to ask you, bro. And I want to talk about the Kevin, or the Sincerely Collins shit, too. But the Kevin Gates moment, bro, that shit was fucking funny. But Do you want to hear what's crazy about that interview? Yeah. Dog, like, I fuck with Kevin Gates. Yeah, man, he hard. I He's fire, right? And I've met this dude. In before. a real street nigga bro, galore. I I've met this dude before, right? He been so shaking I hands with everybody and hugging everybody. Bro, I was shocked. Bro, when I did radio in Tampa, we had him on Wild Splash, and this guy literally walked through Club Sky in uh, Ybor City and hugged and, and kissed everybody. Every Aww. single person everybody. in the club. Oh. I love that. Bro, I've seen that's him do why it. people love him. Like, that, but oh. so I see him in the lobby. I'm like going down there to grab him. He's cool as fuck. Yeah. Kicking it. Yo, yeah. We shooting the shit. The mics come on. Then this fool all of a sudden just goes full prison mode. Yeah. I was like, what? The, I saw this. He said, hey, like, sir, please bro, don't touch me, sir. Bro. <laughs> and I was just, I, at the time, I was like, okay, I can either just like, we should like, like I could keep this going and just be, try to be a professional or I could just like end the interview. Yeah. This is the craziest part. We got through the interview. Once the mics turned off, he sat there for two hours shooting the shit with us on some real cool ass dude shit. 
and played us his whole album. So he just wasn't feeling the mic. Like I have he really no, was, bro. I have no idea. He really felt like he was in interrogation just because yeah, the mic was on. Because like, it's recording, yeah, literally. Recording. I don't know, but like, bro, you you're here. You you know what this is. We're at a radio station. We're gonna ask you questions. This is what this is. Otherwise, you should have just not came through, bro. Facts. Right. So you could have stayed home. Mind you, know? you <laughs> I got nothing else to say. Like Kevin Gates, like I said, we chopped it up with him two hours after the interview. And he was like, man, I wish I would have. I wish you would have started the interview now, now that I fuck with y'all. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> That's some funny shit. I'm dead, bro. But now y'all still, and this is what I say, me being an interviewer, I watch interviews like how people listen to music. Like, that's my shit. Now, me too. That's, that's my I, drug. I sit there and watch interviews like crazy. So even while I was watching, I was like, damn, they did an excellent job of, because there's two ways you could take that. Right. I'd probably be the nigga, because I'm still to the point in my interviewing where I can't, like, I don't know, bro. We probably would just gotten to bullshit, because I'd be like, you could just not come if you don't want to talk. Or you got somebody who will just shut down completely and start just saying weird shit. Y'all carried the fucking interview like the shit never happened. Right. That was impressive. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, look, I've had some interesting interviews. That's one of I mean, that's that's one of them, man. No, bro, that was big, man. So, and I don't want to take too much more of your time because we don't, man, no, I, I hope mean, I can get a part I got two. until about nine o'clock, so we I can keep going. I hope I can get a part two from you for goddamn show, but... um, We only been here for what, an hour? Oh, yeah, no, you got, if you got, if you good. We bro. got time, bro. Hey, all right, so the Colin shit, man. I was only asked because I've seen it all over Twitter. Well, listen, I do also, I also uh, we're talking about people close to that situation. His dad and then my, you know, my best friend over here. Um, yeah. So sincerely, Collins. I'm fine. Sincerely, Collins is obviously an immensely talented individual. Mm -hmm. um, somebody whom which when I started managing him had about 800 followers and I rock was working with him. And uh, he had a mercy freestyle where he remade mercy and it was blew my mind mm. and it was crazy. And then him and I just became friends. And then I rock and me are like, you know, that's like my OG. Shout out I rock. And so, uh, Collins was somebody who I really liked as a human being. And, um, someone who I literally leveraged every single relationship I've ever accumulated in my career for his career everything i put it all on the line for that kid every single favor i could ask from someone i asked for him right yeah i know and i know how that goes so check this out that whole sincerely collins runs technically started when i lived in tampa so i'm busting all the plays from three thousand miles away with that being said met collins um, he was a part of a group called Weird is the New Cool, which I thought their music was atrocious. But my and my little cousin was their number one fan, like their number one groupie. So she would always try to push their music on me. And I'd be like, yo, this shit is trash. So when I met Sincerely Collins with iRock and heard his solo shit, and I was like, yo, you're fire. And he was like, yo, what's crazy is Chelsea told me you thought my shit was trash. My cousin. Um, and I was like, wait, you're the you're the dude from that fucking trash ass little fucking band? Like. I was like, bro, don't do that shit no more. Like, yeah. that ain't it, buddy. Like, so we had just became friends and I was pushing him and Futuristic and V and uh, just going crazy with them on the air and just trying to, like, I hosted Rula, the first Rula tape. And I was also taking Futuristic with me everywhere. Yeah. You know, I was like, yo, come with me. Wherever I go, you, you come. You instrumental in all their careers, bro. Yeah, I, man, man, me and Zach had a crazy time up in Flagstaff with Wiz Khalifa. One of the craziest nights of our lives. Yeah. T took over a cabin or no it was an nau homecoming and we just took over somebody's house party like we just showed up unannounced me Wiz khalifa's futuristic and just it was wild but that's <laughs> but but sincerely collins ended up deciding when i moved to tampa like okay i want to make sure that like i'm extremely like i want to manage an artist and there really was only one artist it was either going to be him or v um i ended up coming on board with i rock to manage Sincerely Collins. Um, and, uh, or actually go keep on, keep on. No, and and like I said, man, like everything I could do for a human being in the music industry, I did for that kid. Straight the I fuck up. That. So we put out an album called Destroyer. We put out Sincerely the Mix. First of all, we did Sincerely the Mixtape. Then we did Destroyer. 
And then um, he started to get like a little bit of an ego. You know, it was like whatever, some rapper shit. Yeah. Um, there was a point in time where me and I Rock kind of were like, hey, man, like right now we're just kind of like, because he really wasn't like, he didn't, wouldn't hear anything we were telling him. It was like, you like he knew what was best and that's fine yeah but at, there was a point in time where we had kind of said okay like we're just gonna let you do you bro because you got this yeah me and i rock yeah. right and then you know like i said i care about i cared about that kid like this dude would come over to my house play with my son like for real like some fan i got anybody i work with is my family like yeah. i take you in like your family yeah so we kind of had that little like weird riff and then everything got cool again. And then he had, he had been working on um, the legend of Phoenix. And, um, and then I was like, I once, once we got back cool again is when I, I, you know, we came, came on board and we, we dropped that album, you know, any features that that kid's ever got are all for me period. Yeah. I mean, every single one outside of like, you know, whatever random singers he has on his shit. <laughs> but I do want to talk about like, all of like light work that's all me bro tony chalk on the beat and bootleg kev plugging the whole shit period yeah like that, that was a record bro troy ave like all the shit bro low key he was supposed to have jada kiss on a record he was supposed to have g easy on the possible remix with that being said collins again he was extremely impatient and he was like, I want to go on tour. So cut Cal. Sure. So cut Calhoun, who was um a part of Tech Nine's circle. Um, he was signed to Strange Music and he left. He went on a tour. Mm -hmm. And Collins had the uh, opportunity to open up for him on this tour. But he would have, I think he only got 50 day, a hundred fifty to hundred dollars a show or something. And like he had to pay for his own like gas. I don't know. It was like a just a horrible look. Mm -hmm. And I remember me and Iraq were like, bro, don't do it. Like, it's a bad look. Be patient. At the time, I'm working on trying to get him on Ritz's tour that Snow the Product ended up being on later, which would have made a lot of sense because they had a song together. Like, and, and that was happening in October. Yeah. But he was so impatient. He's like, I just want to get on the road. So him and Tony Chalk go on the road. Tony's his DJ. And they go and perform for like 20 people every city. While he's on the road, there's some fucking creepy, creepy ass, trumping ass motherfucking white dude who managed Cook Calhoun at the time named Josh Rickards who's just in I guess somebody's in this fool's ear on the road yeah. saying that they could do better it's like yo you're man, essentially trashing whatever me and IROC are doing Yeah, right he calls us from the road and is like hey man I want to go a different direction with my management would you guys release me from my deal and I'm now Mind you, I'm a I'm a loyal guy. Like I'm a loyalty guy, right? So as soon as he said that, I was like, "Bet, yeah." Sent him an email, his official release. I didn't even, bro. Mind you, I never made a single penny from Sincerely Collins, and never took a dollar from that man, bro. It happens like that. No, no, no. Guess what? I could have. There was money coming in. I I know he's got a daughter. I'm here for the long run. I'm not here to take money out of your kid's mouth. I don't need the fucking 15% or whatever. Like, yeah. hold on to that. Never took anything. Yeah. Says that to me and I rock. I was like, all right. Now, mind you, somebody I care about. I'm like, all right, bet. Cool. So second that that happened, it was like over for me, right? It was like, cool. And mind you, this is somebody who I also, me and I rock have protected yeah, he was doing shit that like certain people out here weren't vibing with, so we would get those calls. I'm sure he knows, and we would just have to be like, "Yo, man, Collins is different." Like, just you know, there was people who wanted to put hands on him. Not, and mind you, those people were in the wrong because Collins yeah. is just not nobody that even wanted right. To like, chill out. <laughs> but like, what I'm saying is like, "Yo, man, like, I really went to bat for this guy." Yeah. Um. So that happened. And then um, I Rock still ended up working with him because I think he ended up realizing he might have fucked up. And I Rock was much more forgiving than me. Yeah. 
And that's right? surprising because that rock ain't super forgiving. <laughs> and, and hey, and hey, guess what? At that time, I didn't even take anything personal. Yeah. I was just like, all right, cool. At least I'd rather you show me who you are now than like later. We really at the bag. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Right. So there's no hard feelings between me and Sincerely Collins at the time. How did the internet shit go down? Let me tell you. So, bro, I don't know. You was responding, really. What happened was, I, I'm friends with Nipsey Hussle. That's yeah. my guy. Um, I was close with Nip, bro. I interviewed Nipsey Hussle in 2009 in Boise, dog. In Boise, Idaho, that man was on my radio station freestyling. It's still on YouTube. Shout out to Steve Lobel. Like, I know Nip. I'm not going to say, like, me and Nip are best friends. But... I remember me and Steve Lobel. I was like, damn, Bootleg know everybody. Bro, I know Nip well, right? Like, that's my guy. Yeah. You know? Like, I've been at an arm's distance from him his whole career. Yeah. Where I could hit him at any time. Mm. We're not, for, like... We aren't like going to each other's houses and eating dinner, but you I know I know yeah. Nipsey very well. We respect each other. It's love. Mm -hmm. Nipsey dies, and I'm in L.A. on the radio live when he when he gets killed on that Sunday, bro. It's literally like the craziest shit. His loss to that city was the craziest shit I've ever seen. Bigger than Kobe. Like Kobe died, wasn't shit compared to Nipsey dying. That's crazy because I felt Kobe way worse. Yeah. In L.A., Nipsey dying was insane. Yeah. And bro, like, I was like, so sad. And then this motherfucker, Sincerely Collins, mind you, again, e extremely talented kid. Mm -hmm. But from when I first met him to now, that man's ego has taken over whatever I remember. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Does that make sense? No, nah, it happens, dog. Yeah. And um, usually with big artists, obviously. But well, he's not big now. Yeah. No, I'm not saying. I'm saying usually it happens with. Hey, big, and listen, like, let me tell artists. you something. Sincerely, Colin should have had a Grammy by now, bro. A Grammy. If you listen to his first two albums, they're almost perfect. And guess who was a part of both of those albums? Bootleg Kev. Since then, this man has been throwing shit at a wall. I don't know what happened. I'm not in his life. He might be going through some shit. Like I, I'm, I don't want to be insensitive because I don't yeah. have, I don't have any sort of beef with Sincerely Collins. Nah, yeah. Like I, I cared about shit. that dude. Like it's just this is where I'm at. This is where you're at. Unfortunately, whatever you're doing anymore, it just ain't it. And no. You still came back and showed love for the one project. No, I, I again after all that first, and that was because I Rock was still working with him. Yeah. That project I got played in this big room over here. Gotcha. Sincerely, the mixtape too. Yeah, right. And mind you, it ain't no personal shit. But he said some shit like just some real weirdo, egotistical shit about somebody painting over his mural. He had like a mural in downtown Phoenix that was painted by his friend. He made it seem like that mural was painted because somebody loves Sincerely Collins so much that they painted a mural. Yeah. No, that mural was painted on the back of his friend's office. Yeah. Okay. So let's keep it funky. God bless. With that being said, he was like. Motherfuckers need to get Nipsey'd out. This is like two days after Nipsey dies. Yeah, and he crazy. says, motherfuckers need to get Nipsey'd out here to get respect in their own city. And I was like, I just commented again. I didn't say anything crazy. I said, and he went deleted all that shit. But I said, hey, bro, let's not use Nipsey Hustle as a verb two days after he dies. And don't ever compare yourself to him. There's no comparison. Like, I'm living this shit right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then he goes off on this. Yo, because someone replied and said, yo, I thought y'all were cool. Gosh. Me and him. Nah, that motherfucker's just mad because he don't. He still want to be my manager. And I told him I didn't want him to be my manager no more. Oh, uh, I seen that shit. Oh, so then I really want, then I really aired him the fuck out. Yeah. Because yeah. if we're telling the truth, <laughs> bruh. Uh -uh. I rock's calling me like, yo, Kev, that G Easy feature, can we still get that? And I'm like, Rock, you know I love you, right? But I'm not working with that kid no more. Yeah. So no, like, like if we're keeping it a buck, Tony Chalk, who produced Lightwork, has maybe gotten forty dollars from that song. Wow. Tony Chalk, I manage him. He's one of my closest friends. Sincerely, Shout out Chalk too. He's yo, Collins legend. been fucking all his producers. All the producers who gave him all his big records ain't made the money he's seen off those fucking records. Wow. 
Light and work. I see the statements. Light work was a record. Guess what, motherfucker? Foundation still sends me your statements, bruh. And you can't even take care of Tony fucking Chuck? Who's a fucking delicacy in Arizona? And happy to help at that. Tony Chalk is one of the people that even before he had any reason to fuck with me, just showed love. Like that dude is a genuine good dude. So that's when I commented like, bro, bro, you want to do this shit? Like I said, bro, it's not some like, it's just some disappointing shit because he should be a superstar. He's he's a very talented kid. And, you know, um, He's had a, you know, he's had a rough life, you know, losing his mom early and shit. But yeah, well, I mean, we all got rough lives. And like for me, I but I don't know. He got real wrapped up in his ego and like trying to be a mini Kanye and getting wrapped up in all this like vegan crystal shit that he started making all this whack ass rap music. Like the shit he puts out is atrocious, bro. Now, mind you, I hope his new album is fire. Yeah. I want to see Collins win. I do, dog. I promise you. If that kid gets a hit tomorrow, I'm going to be happy because I'm going to be like, yeah, I knew it. Yeah. But the shit he's been putting out, it ain't it, champ. Yeah. And I don't know what happened because he's a genius. He's he's a very smart kid. With that being said, it's nothing personal. But when he's, he's popped off on Instagram like that, I'm like, all right, it cool. It sounds like what you said about him and is my opinion on... And I ain't going to like name no people because there's so many of them, but it's my opinion on a lot of Arizona artists. And it's not even real buzz that they get. It's literally a little bit of local fucking buzz, typically. Bro, if you Niggas go to Sincerely Collins' bio right now, it says like, I, it used to say, I don't know if it says anymore because I don't follow him anymore. I'm going to go look. I don't follow him either. But it used to be like, you know, hashtag light work. Like, and then he would like, he did that Yap Yap video and it was like a, an infomercial on how to make a hit song. Like you might know him from the hits of light work and possible. I'm like, bro, those songs weren't hits. They were Arizona. They were Arizona oh, yeah, hits. Yeah. Light work possible. Maker of hits. Light work possible. Yeah. Maker of hits. He doesn't have a hit. He's got a song. He's got two songs. Also, again, you can ask DJ Mad Rich why light work got love. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause y'all was plugged. And matter of fact, I want to give DJ Mad Rich a shout out. Cause I went to the Super Show last year and um they ain't have no more tickets left and uh, I hit Magic and I was like you give me he's like oh I'm, we already gone in hit Mad Rich Mad Rich came walk me in no tickets no nothing through the back Cardinals entrance I, Mad Rich is Mad a Rich, fucking man. incredible man give that man his flower but no with Collins like I said bro he let that little bit of success inflate his ego because people in Arizona only care about this bubble. So yeah, in this Stay bubble humble, for a space for a period of time, Collins was that dude. Yeah. Right? He was the only dude getting real radio rotation. Mind you, at that same time, he's also making the best music that's ever come out of Arizona. But Futuristic was running the shit up. But if you put Destroyer and the life or the, the Legend of Phoenix against anything Futuristic's ever done, quality wise, they're just not there. Yeah. Zach, though, legend. Zach is an incredible artist. Yeah. And I respect Zach had that lightning at the time. No, he's still, bro. Let's not get fucked up. Future Race is still doing his thing. Yeah. Like that man is well off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. that man that nigga Futuristic. got a house next to Futuristic a house. is a legend. He got a house next to a house. Futuristic a is a, a legend who never <laughs> compromised his shit. He got dolphins swimming in the back. But what I'm saying is sincerely, Collins made the best shit I've ever heard come out of this state, and it's not even close. Yeah. See, it's I, not I, even close. I gotta really, cause this is the time where I wasn't fucking with. So I'm about to even go back and listen to. Go this listen album. to Destroyer and the Legend of Phoenix yeah. and be like blown away, bro. Yeah. This shit is like timeless music. So that's a shine moment. Clearly, you ain't hating. You say you nah, got the shit bro. To what come you out mean? I got, signed him. You said he got the hottest shit to come out of Arizona. Damn. Yeah. To this point, yeah. Those two albums, bro, they're great. So I hope he wins. I don't know whatever he's doing or whoever his team is now, like. You know, he's on some goofball shit. Yeah. Do you think it's harder when you get over 30? Or do you think? Yeah. yeah. Hey, guess what? Let me tell you something, man. All I'm going to say is this. But would you say quit? Markel Del Juan <laughs> is going to be an all time great. <laughs> this man right here, you could go back and look at the cipher. That's I, why host. I told you to work with him, Izzy. I, 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 well, I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We got to quality control the features. I got to hear you say if you're, if you're whack. Bullet, you, you, you ain't getting the Markel feature. Spit. Hey, Bullet's still waiting on you to spit something. Anyway, <laughs> nah, like, Markel is the one. Markel, Alexis, those are the guys. J-Waves, Vino, Daily Finesse, 
Um, V the Ruler. Who else? Prem, De La Prem for them. So I like Miles Prime. I don't know. Merkums, yeah. oh, Merkums, Merkums, Merkums. Yeah. Uh, Yo, Merkums is fucking incredible. Some young cats out but there But like too. those guys, those are the guys. There's some young cats out there too. I've been le- meeting some motherfuckers from like South Phoenix. It's like 21. Some of these niggas blaze, and I ain't on front. Listen, bro. bro like, I, I, I hope Collins comes back. Yeah. I don't know. I just saw him doing a song with a guy who had a sun hat on. Like who had like a sun mask, like an EDM song. It was atrocious. Tony Tony Chalk showed it to me, and I was like, "This is the worst shit I've ever heard." <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's <laughs> bro, it breaks my heart because Collins is a good person. Yeah, no, he is a great dude. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I felt like somebody died in my life. That was my ace, bro. Ask this man. Anything I ever could do for a human being, I did for that kid. Period. I went through some of the lowest points of my life with him on the phone with me. I love that dude. You know what I'm saying? So I hope whatever creative funk he's in, I hope his new album is fucking fire. I hope it is out of here. With that being said, I'm good on that dude forever. Yeah. Like right. that guy could never ask me for anything ever again. Yeah, sometimes if I see him, I'm not going to fight him. Nah. I'm going to be like, yo, what's hey, up, bro? Now nah, you shouldn't even speak at this point. Like, no. <laughs> It, it, like I said, it's not beef. Nah, but it's just even it's when just you like there's around. this is what bro. I remember me and him used to talk like, bro, if I could just get out to L.A. while managing you, it'd be lit. It's over. Look at everything we've done. And I'm in Tampa. Some people don't see the vision, man. And I, like you said, a lot of people be in it for the short nut, for the short win and chasing little no, moments. No. And You know what's funny is if you talk to Collins, he, he's not that kind of guy. Like yeah, I ain't talking about him, but... No, no, no. Like he, look, look, he's a good dude. He makes... You know, he's a very talented kid, man. Yeah. He's, he's like retarded talent. Like next yeah, level. He got, he got retard strength. I shouldn't say that. I might get canceled. <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, let you say that shit. Oh, no, I said retard strength. Well, with that being said, <laughs> you know, hey, what that's what happened. You, you asked me what happened. That's what happened. God bless him. I think he's a good dude, and I hope I wish him whole. I wish him well. All right. Well, that's the truth, though. There's there's no other truth to that story. Okay. And so I'm, you can ask I Rock. I Rock will yeah, back up my man. my truth, and I'll stand with I Rock. I don't on even anything. like to throw Rock name out on it. That's why I call him a verifiable source because I don't even be knowing what he's going. You know what I mean? Rock so dang quiet. And, you know what I mean? But he got now. Nah, but you know we try to, some opinions. We're trying to spearhead sure. the new wave of Phoenix shit. You know yeah. so. Uh, Markel, honestly, truthfully, Markel, I was gonna say between y'all two and Kel, I don't see why it wouldn't happen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, y'all got the yeah, goddamn man. formula, you know what I'm saying? And then you got street niggas like me doing podcasts if you need some help. Yeah, so, you know, Phoenix we got, I, we, know got um, <laughs> we got um, we got a cool team, and I'm trying to help Tony Chalk become a uh, like the biggest producer in the game. And shout out, Chuck, I work with some other artists that are incredible. Chuck like Beethoven. Like right, a, like a Chinese producer. Well, Beethoven. Tony's like a fucking Arizona legend, man. And so, like, I was, I just had to get him out to LA. So he just moved out to LA like a month and a half ago. So I got Tony out in LA, and just working on trying to blow this guy up. Yeah, nah, it's coming. I told Kel, I'm like, you 25 now. Nigga, I was 25 when I started the podcast. When I decided I wanted to do something. Bro, I met this life. fool like he was <laughs> on the cipher with it was you, Futuristic, and Kyle yeah. Collins in 2012. And he was eating ass. He was up, like bro. a kid. He was getting with him at least, Kel, because he was a kid. I, I, Bar for bar, you know what I'm saying? I, I, right. I, I, well, I, I usually ask top five artists in Arizona, but cool thing for you, you've been around the world. Markel. All right, it's so Markel. Like, yeah, I was going to say just in the nation, but go and give me the It's, top it's five. Alexis and Markel. Markel, Alexis. It's Merkums. It's Vino. It's J Waves. That's five. You get some honorable mentions. Honorable mention. <laughs> to, to, I mean, you know, V's kind of an OG, so. V, V's got a lot of music he's sitting on yeah, right now. I feel like, and tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like Brula, Collins, Futuristic, J-Rob the Chief, all them like niggas who are super dope and super making moves with they shit, but they kind of was like the old wave. Right. That's how I feel. Kind of, kind of, yeah. I mean, look, V's like doing some other shit. Like he's signed to Ethica Music. Yeah. And he's sitting on a lot of great records yeah. with big features, and I think he's going to be fine. Um, J-Rob's last EP, I hit him, and, and I told J-Rob, that's the best shit I ever heard. Yeah, J-Rob is a good kid. Fire. Only pro- like, I won't even say what I was going to say. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like, I, like I, once me and um, 
<laughs> IROC stopped working with Collins. I actually reached out to, to J Rob, like, hey, is anyone managing you? This was like 2015 or 16. And he was listening to Collins, so he ain't fucking. He was listening to a lot of Kid Ink. Oh, okay. No, but he was he was signed to some other guy. So it just didn't work out. But oh, J Rob's okay. a really good kid, man. He works hard. Um, Daily Finesse is grinding. Finesse is raw. We mean Finesse from the same section. And yeah. shit like that. Like surprise. Well, he's from uh, Vegas. I'm from Maryville, but we met around high school. I was in El Mirage. He was in Surprise. Yeah. So I know that nigga from growing up. So it was just a surprise me even seeing this nigga seriously rapping and being like, okay, you, you take He's this. cool. Like, um, the Jalopy Bungus dude's got a lot of talent. I think Jalopy has the it factor. I don't know if the battle rap or the what, but I think he has the it. You know, I, I try to like reach out and give him some game when he was doing all that fuck power thing. I try yeah. to I try to like give him some OG game, and I don't think he really. Nah, he want to argue with older niggas. It is what it is. Jalopy he's, would call me an old ass nigga. But and he's argue dope. With me. Like, hey, Jalopy crazy. Bro. Um, <laughs> he's super dope. Uh, the D Bangs kid is dope. He's from Phoenix. Yeah. Um, Futuristics always dope. Um, who else? I mean, my five are those five though. J okay. J Waves, Alexis, Markel, Merkums, and Vino. Need a J Waves and Markel, right? And Vino, and. Also, shout out to the big artists. Um, there's a uh, what's that girl's name from out here that's popping right now? Kiana Lede. Kiana Lede. Kiana Lede. Yeah. Oh, for real? She's out. She's she from South Phoenix. Yeah. That's crazy. I follow her on Instagram. I didn't know she was from. She's from Phoenix. What you think about like Mitch? Mitch is dope, and a hey, and Mitch has been dope. His Will name? Clay is dope. Will Clay. I forgot to yeah. mention Will Clay. Yeah, bro, I think Jay Waves is the best out of all of them. Don't get me wrong. I, but, Jay Waves is fire. Fire, bro, bro. I met Jay Waves in the studio like two weeks ago in LA. He was in my at my studio recording, and I had to like go. Oh, in. So you just met this cat? No, but me and him have been DMing each other. Okay, I was saying, he been yeah, sending he me unreleased shit, finest, boy. bro. I literally had to like dap him and be like, bro, like you're you're it, bro. But that's the thing. I'm from Westside. South Phoenix is like, like this closed off section, bro. Because I'm like, I didn't know none. I didn't know Will Clay. Bro, I didn't know none of Jay, these niggas. Jay Waves is special. Special, bro. I give it to you. To me, him and Kel are like the same thing. Just west on some side, on south some side, rap shit. Side, south I side. don't disagree. On some like who could be here forever shit. I don't disagree. Longevity, long term, keep it player smooth. Can rap they rap a motherfucking anything you want them to rap. Those are my five though. But okay. yeah, but shout out to Will Clay. Shout out. I mean, shout out to uh, Richie Evans. Juice is about to be putting a new album out. You know, yes. there's definitely like waves of the AZ shit. Like, no, I just feel like certain waves are like out now maybe and i don't mean to be like any type of way but that's how i feel hey and there's nothing wrong with that but it's like a lot of that shit was like 2016 20... i think that anybody there's artists who had a window and that's why i really like j-rob's last ep because it was the first time i heard some j-rob shit where i was like oh this, this was getting better because for a while I, every time i would hear something from j-rob I would just feel like it was like this the same shit he's been doing for like four years. Like what's like Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so yeah, like change up the style. But I heard his new EP and I was like, yo, this shit's hard, bro. Like J Rob is dope. Like J Rob still got a chance. Like if he just keeps grinding, like and they all still got a chance. And that's why it's nice for me to converse with somebody like you because sometimes I had these views and they're like, Oh, you're an asshole or not, nah, but and it's I'm true. like no, look, hey, look, what you just said was right. It's Markel and, and J Waves and then some other really dope artists. And 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 also like music shit, some songwriting shit. Alexis is gonna be out yeah. of here. Oh, then that kid is just another beast. Like, but um, I just I just think when you get a certain amount of eyeballs on you, it don't even have to be a lot. Let's say a thousand. Like it don't even have to be a lot. If you don't come with it, you're not done, but you just lost a thousand motherfuckers who was giving you a shot. To be like, yo, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like a lot of niggas are good, but not good enough. Like, they want to be good. They don't want to be great. Listen, man, that's some real shit. And another thing, advice, because I know a lot of Arizona people watch this. If you're an Arizona artist and you're watching this, don't worry about Arizona. No. People are... Jesus Christ. No, no, people, people get so wrapped up in, like, what's happening here and, like, what this person over there is doing here that they think it matters. You can make it to the top out here and still be nowhere. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Bro. That's why I took my podcast all over the country. I was like, I, it ain't going to make yeah. sense if I don't touch motherfuckers other places. No, no, no. Yeah. This the thing is like, that is a big reason why people don't like really transcend because they're so worried about the AZ scene. And there's a time and place for that. Like, I got a lot of love for Justice because Justice, I, I might not necessarily like from a quality perspective, like think that like, the shows he throws have like the hardest rappers, but in every 
city, there needs to be a justice because yep. he's helping develop people. Yep. Straight up. Jersey. And he gets oh, a lot of hate, but justice has a place. And justice has been here forever, and he's gonna be here forever. Yeah, no, that's not people can say what they want about him. Arizona should ignite. No, nah, but get, <laughs> no, 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 no. But like, listen, what I need you to understand is like, you can't shit on what he's doing unless you're a hater, bro. Yeah, big facts. Big facts. Unless and you're a hater. Yep. This guy does so much for so many people, and who gives a fuck if he's making money at the same time? Right. He he is a good dude. Yeah, he's done more for the Arizona scene than everybody, yeah, almost. Right. Bro, like he cares. Like most people don't even care. Bro, and yeah. the fact that people try to give him shit, I'm like, bro, you're. It's because you're a hater. Because if you're looking at this from an objective place, and mind you, there's been times where I haven't. I've been like, I don't know about what justice is doing, but bro, if you're looking at what justice does. And you have anything negative to say about it? You're a hater. The man throws an Arizona hip hop festival. Come on, G. To me, that's and I and I did not agree with any of the shit he did with those billboards. And I told him that. Yeah. I thought that was some goofy shit. But people can make mistakes, man. Yeah. Oh, we all do. And I don't. We all do, man. So but um, yeah, man. I'm a shit. Talk to me about one last thing. How did you catch coronavirus out here? Fuck going to some strippers or what? Now, first of all, I'm married. Oh yeah, my bad. Shout out to my wife. Yeah, sorry, uh, mom, man. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't get mad at him. This pod's on radio. You know what I'm saying? No, um, <laughs> I got it. A, a, either fucking with Alexis because he was in, in my studio and he ended up having it, um, or me and this guy that fucking weekend when Eric. Okay, you the vibe for sure. <laughs> no, I was good. I was good. Nah, that weekend that uh. Or that like month Arizona was open back up. I came out here and DJ'd. I DJ'd an international with no mask on. I fucking DJ'd Swaley's mansion party the oh, day yeah. after. Oh yeah, moment too. Yeah, that was lit. And I I just was being reckless, man. Yeah. I was fine though. Like I didn't I didn't like. You didn't you didn't have no serious symptoms. The symptoms were. In no, I, I mean I couldn't smell. Oh yeah, that sounds fucking terrifying. Right. <laughs> but I got through it. It was I mean you know it was it was it was, it was what it was. It was uh unfortunate, but. Hey man, shout out to that Rona. That shit is real. My grandma died from that shit. Damn, Damn bro, sorry. Yeah, that shit ain't no joke. Motherfuckers out here thinking it's a conspiracy. I'm like, fam, this shit is real. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Well, um, on that note, dog, give shout outs. Give oh yeah, people. listen. And hopefully, we can get a part two. By the way, my podcast, the Bootleg Cat Podcast, is and out. I'll give you that freestyle if that we do part two. Nah, 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 nah. She didn't even say nothing the whole interview. We gonna get, we gotta get another co-host for the other one. We're gonna do no, part two. Nah, you know, yeah, I try to, maybe, you know, I tell people one. jump in if you feel comfortable. Um, show love, you know what, what I mean? was gonna say was uh I got my podcast, the Blue Lake Hell podcast, which is out. Um, so go fuck with that. Um Markel's got an EP coming out September 18th with Tony Chalk. Um check out my radio show if you're in, in LA. Every night, seven to eleven. If you in LA, book some studio time. Shout out to all the Arizona man. My studio, you would think Arizona moved to LA. Everybody in Arizona and my yeah. shit. Now nah, you know what? Everybody started traveling during coronavirus. I was like, what the fuck happened? Like literally, hey, I, prices, I lived on the, the road. Because they get that. I lived we all know why. The last they getting years. that that fucking PPE, that yeah. fraud money, they or they or they getting unemployment. SBA young boy, yeah. bro. Everybody out here is getting that fucking ten racks. Yes. Right. They are still in my I, I literally was like, bro. Last like, time I traveled, actually was fucking with Mitch and YG and them. That was the last. But I was living life on the road. Shout and out then, to Mitch. Mitch is fire. Yeah, and he, hey, that motherfucker connected. I said, Mitch, you know all these people. Like, I was looking yeah. around. You know these people. <laughs> Mitch is fire. Um, yeah, just shout out to everybody out here doing. I also want to shout out Dan G. I don't like Dan G's music. I'm weak as fuck, man. I'm gone, bro. No, no, no. I want to shout out Dan G because I feel like. Then let me say something because we mentioned all that earlier, and I feel like it'd be fucked up for me to not at least shout him out because he's really outworking everybody. Big shine for Dan, bro. Dan is a good dude, man. Dan is a great guy, and his work ethic is better than everybody's in Arizona. So if any, and I see him getting hate too. And I'm like, yo, you want to know why he's more popping than you? Because he's working harder than you, fam. Yeah, consistently, man. Yeah, so, that was a, a nice underhanded. So I want to shout out to Dan. No, I, I don't like Danji's music, but I think he's a good dude. And and I fuck with Danji as a, as a dude. Like, I want to hang out with Danji and drink with him. And he'd be honestly. And anything I could ever do to help with. out with Danji, I'll help out just because I fuck with him. He's a nice yeah. guy. I think that's why Dan's a winner, bro. Because no, and he is a fun, I mean. 
I literally, I don't even want to say it, but yeah. <laughs> Great dude, man. I just, I, I, I want to acknowledge that he's doing his thing. Yeah. You know, so. Fine, Dan. Love you, bro. For sure. And shout out everybody in Arizona. Just keep grinding, man. And, um, you know, go. Uh, I got my record label, Ready, Set the Label. So show love to that on Instagram. We got uh, Markel, Alexis, uh, Ilio, Angel Hill, Tony Chalk, and uh, and Bugsy Moogs. Um, and we might be signing some new artists. Um, so yeah. Hey man, it's Pots on Radio. You it's are. been a wonderful episode. You got anything you want to say? After? Free? Are you gonna rap? In closing, hey, yeah, if you're gonna I say know. something else, you gotta rap. Damn, you know how many people would give me, offer me money to come rap to on come my show? For you. I've literally no, turned down I'm bags because I'm not ready because I was unprepared. You don't, don't have nothing saying, in your head. It was last minute. He asked me to come. You got no nothing in your head. Really, honestly, I do, but I don't. I'm not I'm just gonna do that. All right. I, I would like to do it out there. Okay. That's okay with you. Sure. Oh, yeah. Type of people give a shout out. Say bye to the people. Okay. Well, shout out to everybody in Arizona. You know, I'm holding it down. I'm barely getting started. You'll see. Hey man, big shout out to Markel Delwan. You know, I listen, man. Markel is the fucking nice. future. You know what I'm saying? We got big shit coming. You know, I fuck with them niggas big like real, real fast. Oh, hold on. New Pod Sun episode coming. Big shine moment. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Shout out to Bootleg Kev, Phoenix, Arizona Finance. We up out this bitch, man. Make sure everybody stay corona free and uh, make sure you uh, tell your mama you love her because y'all niggas don't say that. Y'all niggas don't say that enough. Right. <laughs>